lot of Easter eggs in that there intro. You might want to go back and check some things out. Things might be getting a little multiversey. Isn't uh-huh. that right, Anthony Carvoni? What are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Right before we went live, you were like, things are going to get a little multiversey, but don't say anything. <laughs> no, don't no, no. say anything. Because no, we, say- we want it to be natural. And then you couldn't do it. You couldn't hide your own heat. No, Carboni, what I didn't want you to spoil is what is revealed next week in the ah. show that I've already seen, because there is some damn fire there. Of course, I'm Tim Geddes. That is the one and only Anthony Carboni. Anthony, how are I, you doing? I'm doing so well, Tim. Thank you mm-hmm. for having me back. I love having you. And of course, I also love having the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Tim, with great power comes great responsibility. But let me elaborate on that a little bit later. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Okay. And of course we have the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. Line up the cranes, everybody. Line them Line the up, fuck up. Baby. Ooh, can we get a 22 crane salute for the boy? <laughs> Whoa! Now before we get into the rigmarole, before we get into the show, right before the show went live, there was a heated discussion that started. Some like to call it the Battle of the Bulge. Anthony Carboni, would you like to give any more information on this? Sure, absolutely, Tim. Uh, the, we are as we are recording this. It is uh, the year of our Lord, two thousand and twenty-one. It is the fifteenth of November, and we have got all but total confirmation that all three of the live-action Spiders Mans are going to be in No Way Home. And my question was, who contractually says that they have to have the biggest bulge on set before they step onto stage. It's not Tom Holland. Tom Holland's living the life. He couldn't give a lesser shit about stuff like that. I love Tom it. Tom Holland love doesn't it. care. Well, yeah. my question my question for you is who's So Tom Holland obviously does yeah, you're right. Zero zero Fs given any given time. Which one is taller out of Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield? Cuz I feel like the, Garfield. Garfield's taller. So I feel like Garfield's By like not going to foot, care. right? No, so who Garfield, we're going to do everybody? I'm He's a using, human giraffe hybrid made at Oscorp. Yeah. I am using the celebheights.com as our standard. That is the best there source. Are That's the best there, source. 100%. Yeah. That's like, what we're Actually, wait. Like before you Woodward do that, look up and Bernstein to, did. Like, uh, look up Tom Cruise. What like is Tom, Tom Cruise's Brokaw height did. on celebrityheights.com? Because if it's not five foot three, then they're wrong. Give me one sec. Look up Tom Cruise. Doop, boop, boop, doop, this boop, is going to be a very personal thing for Nick right here. He needs this. He I is. Heard Cruz, I heard Cruz is 5'5". Five, five. Tom Cruise is like 5'6". Oh, wow. Five, seven. Okay. That sounds about right. Okay. So five, what's the movie wire? What do we have so for here's Toby? the thing, guys. I want y'all to guess because I think you're not going to be right about what we oh, find out. Let's start I think with Tom Holland. taller than you think. Tom Holland, 5'6". No, five, Tom, Holland's, Tom Holland is 5'10 at least. No. Tom no Holland's way. He's 5'10". 5'7", 5'8". Tom Holland is a perfect 5'7". Five, 5'7", seven. Yeah. Five, five, seven, seven. for real. Yeah. Now let me blow your can mind. I tell, can, I, can, I, can I blow your mind? Tom McGuire, I'm gonna say five I've been in a, I've been in a room with Tom Holland, and uh, that dude is wearing lifts to press events. Then, oh, of course, yeah, yeah. Don't we all? Not, somebody, man. somebody, somebody made him wear lifts to press events, and I don't think it was him. I don't think he cares. I tried on a pair of Air Force Ones yesterday, and I was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. It's too much. It's too much soul. Too Tim. much soul, dude. Yeah. Nick, that sounds like the most you thing ever. No one's gonna call you out for it. Just no, no, no. It's just I'm so used to wearing lower profile shoes. But then I was like, maybe I should get some Jordans. And the woman at the Nike store laughed at me. So I was like, do you guys have any Jordan 1s? She's like, <laughs> this, guy, this guy wants some Jordan 1s. Hey, Becky. Like, All right. Hey, Becky. Let look me, at this fucking idiot. <laughs> let me. Yeah, let me just reach into the Jordan 1 pile where we keep all the Jordan 1s. <laughs> I've never been more embarrassed about that. She's like, do you, want the, uh, do you want the Chicago ones? Do you want the cool red and black and white ones? We got like 90 of those. God bless me. She's like, the only ones we have are the ones made out of recycled other Jordan ones. And I was like, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> oh, I love you so much, Nick. So Tom Holland, five foot seven. Tobey okay. Maguire, five foot seven and three quarters. Wow. He did wow. not. Just yeah. say eight. Eight. That, that petty would. man did not. Uh-huh. Toby said eight. Say eight, Toby. Five yeah. foot eight. No. Yeah. He he did. There's a quote here from him saying, I'm five foot eight. So he is claiming he's five foot eight, but Celeb Heights got his number, man. I'm they guessing know. the Garf, I'm guessing the Garf is uh is anywhere between five ten and six foot. I'm gonna say six Garf two. Like six two. I'm gonna say six two for Garf. He's a tall I am shocked two? to say five ten. Really? Whoa! I, I would have, I would have gave him six two for sure because he has that the lean, the, the skinniness. He has that neck, you know, length, mm, the draft yeah. neck. 
And he's lan- he's lanky in this. He they said, "Hey man, you're going to need to gain about 40 pounds of muscle." And he said, "You're going to need to gain about 40 pounds of shut up." And shut yeah. up. Cuz I'm not well, doing that. But, but I, <laughs> and I love well, it. I'll, I'll sure tell we'll you what. Up. This is like the body profile like we're talking like we're talking about body standards now. But this yeah, is like perfect. kind of always what I've seen Spider-Man as as yes. a kid. See, um and I I, I just I've always loved the slim Spider-Man vibe. I never want to see him bigger and bulky. I I I think it sort of gives off youth, which is what mm-hmm. I've always kind of known Spider-Man mm-hmm. to be, as opposed to 38-year-old Tobey Maguire. See, I'll tell you this though: I like I like Tom Holland Spider-Man. I like Spider-Man being like smaller in profile. Yeah. Um, I do like Garfield's suit, but the one thing I will say is that because he's so skinny, and because of the material, this is the only time I've ever noticed this, but because the material is so thin, it bunches in weird places, and I'm at times I'm like, oh, that makes it look cheaper. But I, I do like a, the design of it. Yeah, I think that's I think that's an engineering flaw because I want to say an amazing two when they update it. They fixed it. He, he doesn't have that anymore, and he's still he's still a lean, a lean mean Garfin machine in that yeah. movie. Tim, we can agree. Amazing two is the best suit of all time. We can easily agree on okay, that. Okay, stop trying, guys. You fucking did it. We'll save that for next week. I of course. Yeah. I'll I'll tell you what about this suit though. Goddamn, like I. Wait, are we in the podcast in a podcast called Suits, 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 Everybody! Suits. Okay, with this suit, I don't love it. And there are moments where it just straight up, it looks like there's going to be an upgrade to it later, which there eventually is. But for a lot of the time when he's in that suit, it looks like, it looks like the suit Peter Parker is supposed to have when he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. (laughs) And there's a lot of moments of that. And I really just do think it's the yellow lenses. I hate the way they look. There are parts in the earlier on in the movie where he looks like a monster. He looks like a creature because he's so slim and slender. And I felt fear, Tim. I felt fear. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm right there with you. I, I want it on record that this is easily the worst live action Spider-Man suit we've ever mm. had uh, b- before this movie, after this movie. I think this is as bad as it gets. Having said mm. that, I think story wise and I think the reason why he has it is really cool. And I like that we see him actually building this. So him having like the the yellow eyes and like the, them being more like goggle ski uh, material and all that stuff. I like that. It, it works for me in a way where I'm like, cool. Obviously, they wanted to make it as different as possible from the Tobey Maguire movies in a lot of ways. But I, I like that reasoning for this suit, even though I don't like the suit at all. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm. Well, it, what I'm about to say is going to be is going to apply to everything blanket. So I'm just going to wait for a moment. Oh. Just wait, just wait, because this is kind of funny's in review where each and every week we get together to rank, review, and recap two different movies. Of course, right now we're doing the Spider-Man movies leading into Spider-Man No Way Home, and I could not be more excited personally. You can get the show on YouTube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com. You can also get it as a podcast by searching your favorite podcast service for kind of funny in review, and we will be right there for you. If you wanted to get the show ad free and you wanted to watch live as we record it, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny, just like our Patreon producers Molecule and Pranksy have done. We appreciate you so very, very much. Today, we're talking about The Amazing Spider-Man. With a runtime of two hours and 16 minutes, it was released on July 3rd, 2012, just two months after The Avengers won. Directed by Mark Webb. It's an, um, ah, directed by Mark Webb, who is an American music video director and filmmaker. He made his feature film directorial debut with the romantic comedy, Nick. 50 Days of Summer? 500 Days of Summer, exactly. Days of summer. I was going to say, up that. Give Summer yeah. a little more days. There on there? <laughs> That's the short <laughs> film movie. That's the short film version of it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the music was done by James Horner. And I've always really appreciated the score to this movie. I think like it's not obviously not as like amazing as uh, the Tobey Maguire one. But I really like the, the Spider-Man theme. But what I appreciated most about it watching it this time is the kind of subtlety of it and the use of it in like the quieter scenes. And it really has like a 90s action adventure kind of vibe to it. And it reminded me a lot of like movies like Hook or uh, Jumanji. And I was shocked to see James Horner did Jumanji. He also did Braveheart. He also did uh, Aliens. The horn gets it done. The horn gets it done, dude. Yeah, you're going to rhyme or something. Uh, It it rhymed in my head, Andy. Then it came out. I was like, that doesn't rhyme, you fucking idiot. What are you doing? (laughs) He did uh, Titanic, including My Heart Will Go On, and he did Somewhere Out There from an American yeah. Tale. So show this man some fucking respect, wow. everybody. Holy yeah. cow. That's that, Those are some credentials right there, Tim. I, I will say, though, at like... Born a horn. W- 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 perfect. The horn's born a horn. 
Um, I, I, it, the theme is very underwhelming to me. And it's, yes. it's moments like specifically when we get to the crane sequence that I think we could all agree is the best thing ever filmed. Also the worst thing ever filmed that I really missed that Danny Elfman, like the triumphantness of that Danny Elfman score in this. Yeah. I, I, I didn't think, I didn't think the character themes were as strong, but I, you know what? Everything goes along this theme that I wanted to, that I want to say, here's the one thing that I'm going to say. It's a more naturalistic movie, this movie, than the, uh, than the Raimi trilogy. And when it is allowing itself to be natural, it is overall of a very high quality. But what it yeah. can't do are those high punch points of melodrama. And I think things like the score, the suit, some of that stuff kind of falls into that where it's like, the music is beautiful, like you're saying, in those quiet moments. And then we get into action and I'm like, where is it? I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for the thing that's going to like amp me up. But that's like across the board with this movie, right? Is every, yeah. It's like Mark Webb looked at the the Raimi movies and was like, they're so over the top. I'm going to dial this back a little bit. But when you watch them back to back, you're like, huh, maybe I needed the extra like 110% that, that Raimi put into that. Maybe I needed the crash zooms and all the other things. Because there are like... There are moments in this that stand out to me, right? There's the moment where he's sitting on his web and he's he's playing like uh, Snood, puzzle bobble, some, or whatever. Some legally distinct version of Snood or puzzle bobble. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever Sony owns. <laughs> yeah. um, and I like those moments. And there's, moments, there's a pop. lot of character moments yeah. that are really subtle between him and Emma Stone here that I'm like, I feel like these two have really good chemistry and I'm really interested in that. But the, everything else is just so understated and muted in this. It just doesn't quite get it done. It never quite gets to that point where you're like, yeah, this is Spider-Man. Andy. If I could wave a magic wand, this is the segment we call wave that wand, wand wave that magical wand, Andy. What I would do is give all of the footage they have to Marvel Studios and say, there's a really good movie in here. I think really that like I and I think when it comes to the execution of certain songs at certain moments or just, uh, you know, maybe the writing in there was kind of not great. Um the, like somewhere in here, there's something so good because at the end of the day, for me, Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker and as Toby or and as Toby McGuire, <laughs> playing Toby McGuire and as Spider Man really reminds me of like that star quarterback that never won the Super Bowl because the mm -hmm. rest of the team just kind of failed around him. Yeah, and I think that like Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy and he as Peter Parker are so perfect, so and good. he's such a good actor. He's just really damn good at being on screen. And it just stinks I mean, that dude, the, the cast, product. It's, it just thinks that the branded, product around it isn't awesome. Yeah. It's but Brandon the, Routh energy. It's yes. uh, it's like it's Timothy Dalton energy. If you're a James Bond fan, it's like yeah. your just, efforts are wasted, sir. And I am so sorry. But that's the, I am that's so the sorry. Thing. Look at the cast in this. Look who they got for this. They, they got Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone, Martin Sheen, Sally Fields. Like it's good. This is dude, a great. This is even good casting Crane for a Spider-Man Man. movie. <laughs> Even Crayman is C. Thomas Howell. Yeah. They don't fuck around in this I movie. I was Johnny not messing so. around. And it's, you know what's <laughs> funny to me is like, I every time I watch this movie, I think to myself, I even wrote up my notes here for the synopsis, right? I was like, man, I, I like the titles of this. I'm into this. Why did I not, why did I not vibe with this movie every time I watch it? And then uh, we see uh, Campbell Scott and I'm like, oh, right. The dad plot. That's the thing that drags this movie down for me. That's the thing that makes this kind of weird. And it's the extra element we don't really need in it. Um, and then you, you remember that Disney the, Channel original movie, The Dad Plot? It was, it's just, it's one of those elements where you're like, what? what? Okay. But then also, I just, I don't know. There's a fun factor that's missing yeah. in, in, in the Amazing Spider-Man movies the, that I think there was too much of in the Sam Raimi movies. I think it was yeah. too much melodrama there. And I think this could have used a little bit of levity in it. Well, so there are, Tim, may we move on to overall opinions? Uh, just real quick, budget of 230 million, box office of 758 million, Anthony Carboni, what are your opinions on The Amazing Spider-Man? So every, I, I love everything Nick is saying because I think I was surprised. I've watched this movie for this. I've, I've only watched this one like twice. I watched it in the theater. I watched it once at home. I said, thank you, Amazing Spider-Man, for your work. And then I put it to sleep. It had a nap. And then I watched it again. And I think this movie kind of slaps, you guys. I think this movie kind of slaps. Thank I think you. It's like got what you're elements to it. Like, yeah, like what you're saying, like what you're saying, Nick. What you're saying, Andy. Where it's like there are things in here, and you can tell why they hired Mark Webb. Straight off of Five Hundred Days of Summer, they were like, "We want to believe these characters are feeling the emotions that they're feeling. We want to believe their relationships with one another." 
he apparently said that he had been going around after 500 days of summer doing like general meetings with studios, which is like, hey, you pitch your ideas to us. And then if we have anything that we own that you're interested in, you could let us know what your take on it is. And he was like, what are y'all doing with Spider-Man? I'm really because, you know, if you walk in and you sit down in front of Amy Pascal mm -hmm. in the year of our Lord 2012, you're just like, can I have Spider-Man? And then when she says no, you just move on to what you thought you were right. going to get from Sony. You know, <laughs> I mean, his last <laughs> name like, is you, know, like, you can Come have on. 600 yeah. days of summer. And you're like, all right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like, uh, so the things that he does in this movie that are him. I really enjoy. I appreciate those relationships. I appreciate the casting. I appreciate the sort of more naturalistic world. Um, I think where this movie has issues is number one, this guy was not an action director and it shows that this was his first time dealing with a production this big and an action sequence this big and juggling those elements. Number two, uh, I feel as though everything is good about this movie until it feels like it has to reference the other Spider-Man movies or, and it does this a lot, borrow from the Dark Knight because we were all really into the Dark Knight at the time they were writing this script. And so there's a lot of stuff that falls flat because Mark Webb is trying to do a Raimi moment that doesn't fit or maybe the studio said, hey, when Sam was doing it, we did it this way, maybe you could do it this way. But there's specific Raimi moments in here where I'm just like, dude, you didn't have to do that. We don't need you to do that. The crane scene doesn't need to be five and a half minutes. You know what I mean? Like the lizard doesn't have to Jekyll and Hyde just because that's what Sam did. Don't worry about what Sam did. Make mm -hmm. your movie. Um, and then, you know, there, we were getting grittier and more serious because the Dark Knight, Captain Stacy's last scene is literally Commissioner Gordon talking about Batman. <laughs> like it's almost word for word. So when he's not feeling like he needs to do that stuff, I, and this, he gets out of his own way, I think there's so much cool shit in this movie. I don't mind the Parker verse building in this one as much as I mind it in the next one. It bugs me, but it's not the thing that bugs me the most about this movie. I was surprised at how much I liked it going back in. Nick Scarpino. Um, yeah, I mean, I like these movies, but I want to love them. And I think that's the problem I always run up against. It's exactly what Andy's talking about, where I'm like, there's this, you know, there's so much good stuff in here that I'm just kind of saddened that it didn't quite come together to make something fantastic um, or amazing, I guess, as you want to, if you want to put it there. Hey, wow. But I think hey. he's got a lot of really good touches. I, I like that it's darker. I like that it's more real. Like their dynamic is more realistic and it's not melodramatic. And I, I, I'll disagree with Anthony. I think a lot of the action set pieces for me work. I just think Lizard... The lizard wasn't written that well. He's not that compelling of a villain. And the 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 dad plot stuff just kind of kind of wears on me after a while. I'm like, I don't this mystery that he's going on, specifically I know he's gonna really go into it in the second movie. I just didn't I don't like that as a as a as a C plot. Um, but I like Andrew Garfield. I love Emma Stone. I think they had great chemistry, if I'm not mistaken. I think they were dating at the time, which I think helped um really kind of seal the like, you know, it really sold it for me because they really kind of liked each they other. They started dating because of this movie. I think yeah. that's yeah. Um and I just but so did like, Kirsten Dunst and Tobey Maguire, and you'd never <laughs> fucking know. <laughs> That's news to me. That's news to me. <laughs> you think Kirsten Dunst was like, I'm fine dating someone 5A, but when she found out he was 5'7 and three quarters, or whatever it was, she was like, That's the final straw. That's it. There is, a, there is a quote from her on celebrityheight.com <laughs> saying that exact same thing <laughs> Pulitzer Prize winning celebrityheight.com. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but I think, you know, like we talked about, or we talked about with, with the, the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies, right? Which was the ones really we talked about laying the foundation for what we have now which we're thankful for i do think that this was sort of a counterbalance to that where they looked at it and said we're going to go a little bit more understated with this and then finally when they decided to do spider-man homecoming they were like oh we found the balance we understand what the balance is of fun to kind of darkness to kind of quippiness um i think the quips in this are a lot more i think a step in the better direction is <laughs> yeah which, but but still, some of them I'm like, it's like someone who wrote quips, which is good, but they didn't bother to read the quips back and hear them say them, some because a lot of them are just kind of mean spirited sounding. Nick, can you guess what my favorite one is that I love every time that I die every fucking time? Oh uh, no, go for it, give it to me. I can't I'm remember. Right oh no, he's got a knife. Oh, my yeah. only weakness: small knives. Small, yeah, small I sharp fucking objects. Fucking die every time. It's um, that. It's that, and being like, yeah, get get out the window. Yeah, go crawl out the window. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Like, go, yeah. That's so good. He's so good. 
Um, but yeah, so I mean, I, I enjoy watching these back. I don't think they're spectacular. I don't think they're they're a hundred percent. But there's something here, and I also think I'll call out too. Um, the nice little touch that I that I think he added with this was like the first person stuff, which I think I always I forget yes. about it. And then when it comes, I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's cool that we actually get to see that. Um, and I I do like the suit. I do agree that the the eyes kind of bug me a little bit, but I like the suit because I think it's a it's kind of it's just different, right? It's more sleek, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, it bunches in places, but they fix it in the second one. So yeah, he just needs a better idea. tailor. That's all. Yeah, slightly better tailor. I got one for him. Andy Cortez. I mean, yeah, just this movie is like so close to being awesome, and um, I think when I I think why I favor this over a lot of what the Raimi movies did is because I. I catch myself in this movie going, that's really goddamn cool. What a really good performance right there. And in the bad scenes, I just kind of go, ah, that's disappointing. Yeah. This could have been really, really cool. Where in the Raimi ones, when it's fucking James Franco saying something, I'm going like, God, this is fucking oh, terrible. Brutal. Amongst the other cool shit in the Raimi movies. Because with the Raimi movies, it's like awesome shit. Damn, that's really, really bad for me. And then in this one, it's more of like awesome shit. Ah, missed opportunity, man. Like... This movie is so close to being awesome, and I think I think Andrew Garfield just kind of got the shit end of the stick on this one. Born in the wrong era, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think this movie is still enjoyable, though. There's, yeah, I love him in the suit being the quippy Spider-Man, talking shit, and it works because I envision cool-looking Andrew Garfield underneath the suit and not Tobey Maguire underneath the suit. So it just, it just works more for me. Um, and yeah, I just love the performances, man. I'm just always kind of blown away by how impressive the acting is um in a lot of different moments and uh sell this shit man All but this movie has also just got a lot of like i i, I fucking hate that sequence and uh the basketball scene could be better and there's just a lot of moments like that that just really bum me out um but yeah i think this movie is like ultimately just missed potential to being a really awesome sp- superhero movie Rick? yeah i was gonna say like i i think that <clears throat> You, you talk about Andrew Garfield, you talk about some character. I think the Emma Stone character is definitely a reaction to the MJ character, right? Where they give, she's, she feels like a little bit more three dimensional than MJ did until Way the more. end when you're like, why? Why would they take her out of the action of this? And I understand that they, they had to give, you know, they had to have the death and the, and the conflict there. But I think if that movie had been written now, the producers would be like, no, I don't think she should run out of the building. I think Emma Stone's character. I think I think Gwen Stacy as a character would be like, no, I'm going to take this vial up to the roof and like solve this problem myself. Which is like, oh, I, watching this back, I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember how this happened. I was like, oh, right, she just leaves. They just take her out of the third act, like the climax completely. And and yeah. uh, Dennis Leary heads up there. Now, granted, when it's, when someone pops in a bunch of shotgun shells with a shoddy Bugatti, I'm not going to complain about that because it was a good moment for him. But. It was just one of those things where I'm like, we're not quite there yet with 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 these secondary characters. Well, she's a high school student. That's I, true. I think that it makes she sense. Also had the, she's not Spider Man. That's true. But she had the. I, I there's that moment where he's like, you got to get out of that building. You have eight minutes, and she goes, No, I have eight minutes. Like she has, she makes the choice. Of like, no, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to do this thing. And he but goes, that's you not, not her and dad. She, what's that? That's not her dad, though. I get it. I get it. I, again, I'm not. I understand why everything yeah. happens, but I just feel like it's one of those things where like. She, she was like almost there for me up until that point. And then yeah. I, I wish they had kept her in the action because I think it would have it also would have added to the tension, I think, a little bit. Because you don't really you care about Captain Stacy, but not 100 percent. Not 100 percent. You know, no. You're like, whatever. He's- but <laughs> I mean, I think I, I would have maybe cared more had that actual hand going through the torso been a little bit more impactful that was like such a kind of i i wanted garfield to look down and be like no oh, like just scream or something yeah like it just kind of happens and then he jumps up and we just continue the action and there's not really a whole lot of emphasis there it could have been so good and also the music playing in the school sequence when uh spider-man is you know webbing lizard and all that shit it's like just not good. It, it, I don't know what's happening. Wow. It, it just feels like someone left the music on. And I like I needs to pop. I need something more there. We got we got B Day James Horner, I think, for this one. Like it's James Horner, but I think we got oh, B Day. I so James disagree, Horner. man. I love I think, it. I think I it's think, so good. I think just like Zimmer, I think just like some of these other some of these other big composers, he obviously has assistants that that come in and do some or all of the music, depending on how in, into the project he is. And I think I think uh, I think Jimmy Horner handed some of this off to to the interns. But uh, yeah, that goes back, uh, Andy, to what I was saying, where like 
Mark Webb just didn't know how to juggle that action and that emotion because he never had to do it before with like the CG and the action and everything. Because like Captain Stacy gets run through and you're like, Captain, oh, Captain Stacy just died. Okay, we're moving on. Like, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Use that. Use that moment. Anthony, do you think that there there was a kid that came through with with like the Starbucks order with all the chocolate croissants and he was like, oh, you know what, kid, you'll do. You take you take this soundtrack today. He's like, right like here, I Mr. Uh, Mr. Horner, I, I, what if right here I do like a and, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and James Horner's like, you know what, kid, you've got until I finish my latte to lay this out in Pro Tools. <laughs> <laughs> Tim. Yes. What, what do, do you think? think? Oh, look at that in the little surround sound for me. I really like this movie. I've always really liked it. And every time I watch it, I end up just really liking it more. I totally agree with the sentiment overall. And Andy, I think you're the one that nailed it closest to how I feel, which is it's missing the Marvel Studios polish. Like there's just one layer of polish getting rid of a couple elements. Definitely the parent plot lizard just kind of being tightened kind of to Carboni's points of like the Jekyll and Hyde thing, like not being necessary. I don't think that it detracts too much, but it is a perfect example of this movie overall, which is it's not great. So we look at it and we're like, Ooh, that feels off. That could have been better. And I feel like there's so many things here that like were really damn good. And at the end of the day, I've been complaining for a very long time about the Tobey Maguire. Spider-Man is not my favorite type of Spider-Man. I don't like the sixties character. I don't like the dork Peter Parker. I like the relatable Peter Parker. And that's what Andrew Garfield is through and through. I love the idea of the, the way that he is as Peter Parker, not being this like super mega fucking nerd that nobody likes because he's unlikable. I like where he's like, yeah, he's kind of a loner skater guy that like does his thing because that is way more real and way more relatable. And when he puts on the mask, he gets heightened just a little bit. It doesn't need to be this. I get to be someone different in the mask. Like whenever that happens, I feel Spider-Man can be really corny and kind of like by the comic book in not a good way in just kind of like that's that is just the writing that has to happen the way it's supposed to because that's what serves the story but i think this does spider-man at his best which is peter and spider-man are both equally involved with the plots for the villains and for the love interests and for the the cops and for all that stuff the the fact that there's even a cop storyline going on in this i thought was handled really well peter you know, being an spider man to- says a cab in this movie and i'm straight up for it i am yeah. fucking here for he says, it what <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's handled very well. You know, I think like that, have that whole dinner scene, I think is interesting. It creates interesting stakes and it kind of resulting in him telling Gwen like, yo, I'm Spider-Man that fast feels weird, but also earned for the plot mm-hmm. of this movie. And but, I think that but that was one of those parts that I love, right? Because if you're a high school kid and what I'm you saying. just fell in love with this girl and she's like, uh, you want to tell her that. Like that's the, you would, you, there's no way you wouldn't tell her that, right? Yes. And I, and I think on. that that's where like we, we, we're going to talk about the chemistry so much because it's there and it's, it's palpable. It's so good. It's <laughs> so fucking good. And I mean, I, it's not just good for Spider-Man. It's not just good for a superhero movie. It's real. I would watch them do anything. Like I, I totally believe in every single thing they're doing. Like when Gwen Stacy goes, oh, I'm in trouble. Uh, it's like, fuck, this is a goddamn good yeah. Spider-Man. I got movie. a smile on my face is, the whole time, Tim. Compare yeah. that energy, compare the, Ooh, I'm in trouble to the go get him tiger that we love so much at the end of Spider-Man too. Yeah. And that, and that, Oh, I'm in trouble. hits a thousand times harder. Totally. A and thousand I thousand times harder. We're talking different scales. And at the end of the mm-hmm. day, I love all of these movies. I'd rewatch any of them because I love Spider-Man. I love all the different takes. And the Sam Raimi movies are purely iconic. Like there is no taking that away from them. That's where this one completely falls flat. It is not iconic. It never will be iconic. We're going to love it for the chemistry and all that. It is an unfortunate timing thing that this movie had to come not only after those, but after the rise of the MCU, like we, again, this is after Avengers. So the expectations and all that stuff, they're just, it's a completely different level. And because of that, it's bloated and they end up trying way too many things. They're not allowed to touch some of the things that they would have wanted to, because they were just handled in three movies of varying quality. And on top of that, we have expectations for what a modern superhero movie is. And that's why we get things like the parent plot that, it's really just kind of unfortunate. And based on the comics, like that is a comic yeah. run. It's just a bad comic run. And that that's like, what not- do you think? What do you think it was like for Samuel Raimi to sit back and just, and just watch after everything he went through, just watch Sony and Mark Webb toss off the lizard, like, like dirty socks at the end of the day when he wanted it so bad for like 10 years, he wanted the lizard. I think after Spider-Man three, Sam Raimi, like, 
blocked any mention of Twitter of Spider-Man for the rest of his life. That's I fair. think he's done. I don't think he'd give a shit. He's probably like, I'm done with this. Yeah, but I, I think Andy kind of touched on this a little bit, but where the Raimi movies, it's like, there's so many things. It's like, why would they do that? This one's kind of more like, why in the opening scene when Peter's a little kid and his parents are leaving him, would his mom say to his aunt and uncle, hey, uh, he, he doesn't like crust and he likes to sleep with the light on. Tell this boy you love him. <laughs> <laughs> Look him in the eyes and tell your son you love it. Like that, it's those type of things that That's take his me last out of memory. It. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh yeah, yeah. Thanks for letting her know I like crust. I could have fucking told her that. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's I'll, like it's those I'll dumb little just, things. I'll disagree on that one though because that's that scene hit for me because I don't think she wanted him to know that they were like I don't think a that she knew they were going to be on forever and b I don't think she wanted to scare him. But she went her performance in that and I forget the actress's name. I think she does a great job there where she's just saying these mundane things, but she's crying through it. And that, mm -hmm. that, that hit for me. It was just the, 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 the fact that I know how this, <laughs> I was like, I know where this goes. And it's like, I keep having these flashes of a, of a mechanized underground subway train lab. And I'm like, what, what are we doing with this, man? Just get yeah. him in the suit. Let him sling around the city. I, ha I also have questions about the state and stakes of that, uh, of that hide and go seek game. Uh, I have questions about about the temporal nature of it and what what st who Peter thought he was. We'll get into it all, but I have some questions about that. Uh, as do I. Yeah, as do I. Yeah. But before we get to the plot, let me tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Me Undies. It's cozy season and it's time to go all in on the coes, baby. This year, Me Undies wants to help you surround your family and friends with comfort. Uh, with new classic plaid and holiday sweater prints, Me Undies is turning up the comfort this holiday season. You know, I love their undies. Obviously, I'm wearing them right now. My entire body right now is actually covered in Me Undies, and I would never have it any other way. And you get to match your whole family because they got a whole bunch of different things. They got these PJ sets. Uh, you can have some plush robes, some slippers, whatever you decide, everyone will be rolling into the new year comfy. It's available in sizes extra small through 4XL. MeUndies has a great offer for you guys. For any first time purchasers, you can get 15% off and free shipping right to your door. Your days of fighting for your life in the mall parking lot are over. To get 15% off your first order, free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash morning. That's MeUndies.com slash morning. Next up, shout out to Uncommon Goods. The holidays are about more than friends and family. They're about winning the title of best gift giver ever, a title that Kevin Coelho vies for and more, mostly succeeds with every single year. And Uncommon Goods can help make you a Kevin Coelho and give you an edge on this year's competition. G has been using this to get a lot of her friends some stuff and family. They have some fun puzzles they have these fun uh pint glasses that are based on different baseball fields out there really cool stuff uncommon goods also offers uncommon experiences you can choose from live online classes in mixology cooking flower arranging embroidery and more from hand-picked artists and experts plus with every purchase you make uncommon goods gives one dollar to a non-profit partner of your choice really cool stuff to get 15 percent off your next gift go to uncommongoods.com slash kind of funny that's uncommongoods.com slash kind Kind of funny for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon goods. We're all out of the ordinary. And next up, shout out to Stamps. We're all trying to save around the holidays, and that includes saving time because no one wants to spend theirs in line at the post office. Dodge all of that with Stamps.com. Stamps.com lets you compare rates, print labels, and access exclusive discounts on UPS and UPS services all year long. Whether you're selling online, running an office, or side hustle, Stamps.com can save you tons of money and stress, not to mention time over the holidays. Uh, kind of funny, we have a ton of things to give away. We do physical giveaways all the time and we have to ship them out and thanks to stamps.com it makes it a lot easier for joey noel and cool greg uh to stay sane and save a lot of their time and money plus you can get discounts of up to 40 percent off usps and 76 percent off ups save time and money this holiday season with stamps.com sign up with promo code kind of funny for a special offer that includes a four week trial free postage and a digital scale no long-term commitments or contracts just go to stamps.com click the microphone at the top of the page and enter code kind of funny and now let's get to the plot i know this song isn't in this one but i mean barrett was confused and so was i this plot is for you for you nick is gonna say the plot is it good or is it not i think this movie is better than spider-man 2 wow. spider-man 2 
there we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Spider-Man. Oh, I'm in trouble. You got to love that. I'm not going to lie. Love it. Uh, we start off with some nice titles here, and I'm thinking maybe this movie's better than I remember it. Oh, wait, the dad is a secret agent. I forgot about that. <laughs> Little Peter Parker searches for his dad in an old stuffy house. Uh, foreshadowing or bad C storyline? Only time will tell. He finds the window to his father's office broken in, and all hell breaks loose. Peter's dad pops up, open a secret compartment in his drawer, and takes out a file, the double zero file marked on it. We're going to see this a lot, everyone. Remember, two zeros make a double. This movie is just a, a parade of coincidences. <laughs> just a parade of coincidences. Who was he playing hide-and-seek with if his father comes in from the front door during a rainstorm? Who put that broom and those shoes there? Who does Peter Parker think he's playing hide and seek with, Nicholas? I'll wager a bet. I'll wager a bet. Dad's never there. Mom doesn't know how he takes the sandwiches. Peter Parker was unfortunately playing hide and go seek with himself. Oh, that's, wow. that's who tricking he is. himself. Uh, tricking Campbell himself. Campbell Scott. I just I love that they like this is this is what we're talking about for the tiniest roles for the things that Campbell like, Scott. <laughs> Campbell Campbell fucking Scott, who's a what brilliant is- character actor. From Ro- like if you've ever seen if you've never seen Roger Dodger, holy shit! Roger Dodger is an amazing film. He was in Singles. He fucking I remember him from flat. Singles. That's yeah, where I remember Roger. him from. Him and Kira um, Sedgwick. And he's so and he's so good. But I do have to say, we come hard with the secret agent. We come hard with the secret agent, and Peter remembers this because the secret agent of it all is wildly obvious. Yeah, it's weird. But then we head over to, and this is where I'm like, I don't, maybe I don't remember a lot about this movie because I was like, I forget who plays. I literally, in my head, I'm like, did they go older or younger for, for Aunt May? I can't remember. I had Marissa Tomei in my brain. I had uh, the classic actor from the same Raimi in my brain. No, we got Sally Fields yeah. and Martin Sheehan in this. And I'm like, what? How did I forget these two amazing iconic actors are in this? Aunt uh, May anyway. is Benjamin Buttoning. Dude, it's but like <laughs> she's as you go through these movies, Aunt May gets younger and younger and hotter and hotter. <laughs> Dude, it's it's you got uh, listen, Sally Field is Oscar winner. wildly underutilized in this movie, and that's okay. But yeah. it's amazing that she took this role and the scenes that she does have. I think she does a great job in, as does Martin Sheen. But it's like, wow, we swung for the fences with the casting on this one, man. We really Martin knocked Sheen. Out of the park. And Sally Field just hit, just hit the vibe of, of actually, I never knew that this is exactly the vibe I wanted from Aunt May and Uncle Ben, but it is. They're not so old that they're ancient and you think that they should be playing shuffleboard and taking their pills out of little plastic cups yeah. like yeah. Raimi wanted. Mm-hmm. They, they're just, they're a little too old to be raising this kid. And so it separates them from him yeah. a little bit more than a parent would, but they're still there. And damn, when like, Peter says later on, Uncle Ben to Uncle Ben, you're, you're a, good a good dad. dad. Good dad. Oh, and is. it's like, yeah, he is. He's a really good dad. And his yeah. reaction is like, that's a good actor reacting to that moment and going like, thank you. Like, oh, it's so good. It's so earnest. It's so but honest. I, yeah. I will say, though, and we're going to get there in a little bit, but I think, granted, it was crams down your throat for three movies, but I think the Uncle Ben death in the Raimi verse hits a little bit harder. And I think it's because that becomes the sort of main focus for Peter becoming Spider-Man. And in this, it doesn't quite come through that much. You could tell they were trying to make a little bit more subtle of an attempt at it. And specifically, you'll see the scene where he, where he gives the speech where he's like, with great uh, power comes great responsibility. But he doesn't say that. He says like 15 other things. And you're yeah, like, he, he says okay. everything that's kind of like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, he's he's like he, he's like rewriting an essay that he didn't want to plagiarize. You know yeah. what I mean? I, and that's the yeah. problem, dude. Imagine if this movie was made without the Raimi movies. Oh, it would be so would much stronger because, like, you see the elements, you see the changes yeah. happening. Like, the parent plot would not have been a thing. Like, it's but just this, they, they had the, to do this. But this is the thing, Tim. Is I think the differences between the Uncle Ben plot come down to come down to craft, and Raimi just has. Like like Andy was saying earlier, and I think and like Tim was hitting on, Raimi has a visual and pacing craft, and it may not work for everything. But when Sam Raimi looks at a scene, he goes, "Okay, this is the emotion you're supposed to feel. This is how I manipulate a camera and visuals to do it." Where I think Mark Webb understands characters and what yeah. they're feeling in such a better way. Yeah. But Uncle Ben's death, 
fucking uh, macho man randy savage sells uncle ben's death as a like i felt more emotion about the peter the the peter line yeah. reading that nick makes fun of know, every week than yeah. i did about <laughs> martin sheen dying even though i will say i felt like kind of a more general sadness about Martin Sheen dying. I remembered it more <laughs> throughout the movie. I remembered it more because like, of Andrew know? Garfield's re reaction to it. I just yeah. thought Andrew Garfield is so good at reacting to that well, moment. And but also, Mark Webb pulls everything out of these actors, and it's yeah. amazing. And this is no disrespect to Cliff Robinson. Robertson? Robertson. Robertson, yeah. And uh, who's He's a dead man. Plays Get him right. Uh, Rosemary... Harris. Clooney. Harris, thank um, you. Rosemary Harris, they don't ever come off as real characters to me mm -hmm. in the Sam Raimi world, right? They don't have a reality to them. They come off as like, hey, growing up, this was what Aunt May looked like to me, so let's throw her in there, and she is just going to be a bouncing board for Peter's emotional state, and she is going to hopefully be his true north and help him as like a some sort of conscious uh, compass for him, right? Yeah. You cast Sally Field and Martin Sheen, who, by the way, probably know each other because they've been working actors and amazing like A-list actors for pretty much their entire lives they take on a different level of like realism and and that works but unfortunately then you can't have that melodramatic moment with them that's so memorable from from you know from the, the sam raimi verse yeah but it, it's just very it's just very it's it's that weird balance that we're talking about and this, that's what this comes down to this movie is is about balancing all those elements and unfortunately some of them just just are, are a little bit off here and there but we cut over to current day right and now peter pff, i'm gonna say it guys Peter's a babe. <laughs> you know what I'm talking Peter's about? Peter's a babe. <laughs> Peter's a dish. Uh, he's walking around. And I'm at first, I'm like, when I first watched this, I was like, how the fuck? How the fuck are you going to sell me on a line of bullshit, Mark Webb, and Columbia Pictures, and Sony, that Andrew Garfield is not the hottest guy in this school? He's Tim, he straps his skateboard to his, like, cool backpack and walks around with an old Leica camera. I would eat this up if I was in high school. I'd be like, who to is this cool Don't back drink back. of water? You know what I mean? <laughs> and thankfully, I mean, we get like one moment where this incredibly good looking girl walks up to him and she's like, oh, you take pictures, right? And he's like, yeah, I'm all awkward and cute. And she's like, oh, can you take pictures of my boyfriend's car? But then it's like, oh, he is a nerd. But then he's like, yeah, I'll, ch I'll check the old sketch. And you're like, oh, he blows her off. Like, good for you. Like, I love it, man. Yeah. yeah, I love it, dude. It reminds He's me of Spectacular Spider Man. It reminds me Ultimate Con uh, Spider Man, the comics, not the show, Nick. Don't get fucking excited for bad reasons. Uh, I, this is my favorite type of Peter, and I think that Andrew Garfield yeah. nails it. I, I, I remember Everyone. the first time I watched it, uh, everybody, I mean, it wasn't just me, but there was like a large number of like the, the overall reaction was this guy's too cool to be Peter Parker. And rewatching it, I was like, no, he's not. He's no, he's not. He's he's very um. What's what's the best word? He's not a coward. Right? Like he's not a coward. He's not um. He's not a sad sack. He's not no. self defeating the way Tobey Maguire was or like a Silver Age Peter is. But that's Peter Parker. He's a little too nerdy and he's a little too he's self aware awkward, to be cool this. with everybody thing, like, who can just like go to high school and be cool. And that's fine. But I feel like the way he plays this character, I think we're supposed to think he's awkward. But I think it in reality, in in the real world, it would come off as like awkwardly charming, like very, mm -hmm. very charming. Like I feel like he's the guy in the group that you're like, there's no way the girl I like is gonna like him, and then she madly falls in love with him. And you're like, ah, I did not see this guy has a subtle charm to him that he's I was just foot. not understanding. Yeah, I just and always the got the feeling I I like it when Peter Parker because when they do like college and post college in the comics, like even even when John Romita is still there. They do this thing with Peter where it's like, no, people all people had crushes on Peter and people liked Peter, but beautiful. Peter wasn't a closer and he never thought enough of himself to think that people were thinking of him that way. I mean, until he becomes fucking, Spider Man. This Peter fucking closes. Okay, he's locking this shit down. <laughs> uh, maybe not now because he uh, walks real, real into quick, his locker. Real quick, last thing I want to say about the the cool Peter, not cool Peter. It's just like so many people that throw the criticism criticism at this movie that like, oh, Peter's too cool. It's like. Everyone loves the 90s Spider-Man cartoon. You're telling me that that Peter Parker isn't the most handsome cartoon that's ever been drawn and he doesn't act that way? Because, spoilers, he does. He absolutely does. He's Peter chested. Parker is. He's yeah. wearing that yeah. rugby shirt. <laughs> He's so massive. He's wearing those pastels. <laughs> that swoop. <laughs> <laughs> um, we get a scene here, of course, where Flash, uh, Flash is still a dick to him, and then some people um, basically have sex against Peter's locker, and he's like, well, I guess I'm not going to ask you guys to leave because you look like you're inside each other. And then 
He takes some pictures of one Gwen Stacy while she is reading Kurt Vonnegut and wearing thigh high socks. And she's just sitting 500 days of summer available now on. Blue yeah, Ray. it is, it is straight, <laughs> straight from that movie where it's like that unrequited love thing i don't know i never that's really. I love the costuming, man <laughs> the, the costuming of in this movie in in general i think is great not the spider-man suit necessarily mm-hmm. but like just the general peter parker outfit the gwen stacy outfit like you don't get more comic accurate than she does until the next movie uh and with peter i love him being this like skater boy that is like not too cool for school but like not a fucking dork and he has the like long sleeve with the thumb cutouts and stuff it like it just it's, it's believable so like I, he, it, it's in so high school, accurate to him man he's part of that group of kids that like eats lunch out by the tree Dude, and, the you're like, boys. And, you're, and you're like and you're like i was I a bench got, boy yeah you're like i got no we problem with the with the tree we people know. i don't i don't mind the tree people i just don't understand the tree people yeah. and i don't roll with the tree people like the That's tree people all- are where you go where you're like i really i'd like to try some marijuana and the tree people are like, oh, we can, yeah, we can get you marijuana. And then they're like, we can get you like acid. Molly, and you're like, I don't, yeah. I don't know, Molly's a, a little too much. And they they're don't teach you either, yeah. And they're going to teach you how to do a kickflip if you ask, and they don't yeah. care. But they're also the kids that are like, we also don't ride these skateboards because that's, you know, yeah. we don't have to. Don't I, I never ride the skateboard, skateboards. No, but I'll teach you how to do a kickflip right now. <laughs> just, that, exactly. just that TikTok of the guy running down the running down the ramp, and then he keeps running with the skateboard until yeah. he's out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good those one. kids. Uh, then we get a scene where Flash Thompson is uh, just being a bully, right? And you're like, oh great, Flash up to his uh, up to his same antics as, as usual, and he makes Gordon eat some food upside down, and then Peter, he's like, Peter, Peter, take the picture, take the picture, Peter, and it's like, it's I'm like, no, I'm not gonna. Then he's like, I'm not gonna take the picture, Eugene, and Flash is like, don't call me by my Christian name, and he gets super angry and he beats Peter's ass, and then yeah. Gwen steps in and she's like, sun's going down, Flash, sun's going down, mm-hmm. and Flash is like, Flash tired. <laughs> Flash go to first period. Uh, I love the characterization of the two of them right out of the gate with this. I absolutely do. She's well, already done more in this five seconds than MJ did in three movies. Yeah. I, 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 will, I will say this, though. I don't love Flash punching him. I would have preferred just like a really hard shove or something because like when Peter calls out Eugene, that to me shows the audience that these two people have known each other for a very, mm-hmm. very long time. Oh, yeah. They may not love each other, but like they know each other since like elementary school or some shit. So the fact that you're calling out his real name, you know that that's something that bothers him. And then the punch is just like, what? That's like assault. <laughs> like one of them had a yeah, but, but that's the thing is one of them had nice that like one of them had the growth spurt first, yeah. right? And he yeah. became the cool kid. And Flash. they haven't hung out. They haven't hung out in years. And just so Flash can still let people know, no, I'm Flash, and I don't hang out with this guy, and nobody fucking calls me Eugene. Of course he hits him. Me no Eugene. Of course he hits him. Yeah. Andy, Andy, a couple things that you're missing here. One is that this is before we knew that assault was assault. Oh. Right? In high school, you could high school was the only place you could solve problems with your fists that's back right. in the day. Now we're Wild like, West. oh, that's actually super dangerous for kids because concussions can happen at any age. Yeah. Two, Flash was the guy that got his armpit hair first and could do pull-ups in junior high. Oh, and I yeah, he got the guy. president's award for physical fitness. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, I had a, I had a gym coach that was like you can do the first one with a chair under you if you want. And I'm like, don't you bring the fucking chair over here. I'll <laughs> die on this pull-up bar. I'll Anthony. die on this pull-up bar before you bring the chair You'll over. You'll have to pull my corpse away from the pull-up bar. Anthony, that's the difference between you, uh, your, your kind of Italians and my kind of Italians. The coach was like, you could just hang there for 10 seconds. I was like, I'll hang here for five seconds. <laughs> That's what you'll get from me. Let me make a deal with you. Because I got a ghoul in my mouth, okay? Uh, Later in class, we got a great scene. Again, you want to talk about the chemistry between these two. Gwen, I think this scene's great. She goes, what's your name? And he goes, you don't know my name? She goes, I know your name. I just want to make sure you know your name because concussions are very, very real. Like, And he's like, oh, okay. And it's just this cute, like, yeah, she knows who he is. Like, Do you get the vibe with these two every time they're in a scene that you walked in on them fucking? Like yes, I just get the vi- I like every time they're talking, I'm just like, oh, I'm sorry, I walked, I didn't know the the door wasn't locked. I'll just be <laughs> like, that's how much fucking energy they have between the two of them. From the totally, show. totally, because the thing is, let's take what was written on the page, okay? Mm-hmm. So the exact words don't change them at all, and just put different actors in this situation. It wouldn't work. It just straight up wouldn't work. I like very few people can pull this off. I love that from the writing perspective, they went balls to the wall and were just like. 
we're going to let them say some things that s- might seem unnatural, but these people are going to make it seem so real. And yeah. every single time they talk, it does because there's a lot of things they say. That's fucking weird. Like even just mm-hmm. this scene here, of just like, do you know my name? Whatever. This could t- so easily not work, but it absolutely works. It's well, total think- real flirting. It's all the, re- yeah. it's the genuine smiles. And like, I, I, I'm starting to like this girl and you know, it's, it just feels natural. It feels so freaking natural. Mm-hmm. If you all met up at the arcade after, after school and they started talking to each other like that, you would make an excuse to leave the arcade like immediately. Yeah. <laughs> you just, you just want to leave these two alone at all times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause you'd be hit by just the sheer pheromones in the air. Like, ah, it's blinding my I would eye. go to the basketball game and just like just drain a bunch of shots yeah. next. Just like, hey, look, guys, I won 40 tickets. They're like, that's cool, Andy. <laughs> cool. We're making it. <laughs> uh, Peter comes home to find Aunt May uh, making spaghetti, and Uncle Ben is tending to a flood downstairs. And Aunt May is like, oh, what happened to your face? It's like skateboarding accident. Uh, and she's like, oh, okay, we'll just be more careful. I don't know why you guys do these dangerous things or why you do these things. And he goes, because it's stupid and dangerous. We used to remember when we used to be stupid and dangerous, whatever it is. And then downstairs, Uncle Ben's like, what what happened really? Because I know a right hook when I see one, and he's like, "Ah, don't worry about it." Such a good dad. Yeah. I also want. Him, but he's like, "Do I need?" To, oh, that's what he says. He says, "What's going on? Do I need to call someone's parents? Like, do I need to get involved in this?" And he's Here's like, "Here's a nah, big slab like, of meat." Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I I also um, I love this scene as a very natural way to show Peter understands engineering. Like this does not seem forced at all. It's just like, hey, man, there's a flood. Oh, I get what's up. I'll, I'll go to the hardware store. And you're just like, that kid knows more than I do. But, yeah. And he even the says end. that, right? There's a moment where, later where he's like, I haven't been able to help you out with your homework since you were like in the sixth grade or whatever. I love that. Yeah. But it's, it's good. It's like, in that, that to me, I, I think is another strength of this movie. I, don't, I never really bought that Tobey Maguire was smart. We never really had scenes like that or scenes where he had to design things that were that were sciency. We have some uh, sciency Nick, stuff. I'll, I'll I'll direct you to the raindrops keep falling on my head montage when <laughs> Peter Parker was raising his hand quite a lot and Dr. Connors was smiling. That means he's smart boy. Yeah, my, my apologies. <laughs> You're absolutely right. This is so um, but this is so natural. It's just like, yeah, he's a smart kid. Yeah. Yeah. Because what we got in the Raimi ones is we got him being interested in the spiders in the first movie mm-hmm. and like all their like special abilities. And she's like, how would you not be interested? And then it. then we got in uh, the second, the conversation, the back and forth that goes on for 10 years with uh, Octavius. Oh, of are them, you like, using kind of harmonic resonance other. frequencies? Yeah. But that's it. That's Whereas this one kind of shows it a little better, I think. Especially that's not real. Change up, my oil. Coming up later with the, uh, the door lock <laughs> thing. The door, lock the, the door lock's a little home alone, and that's one of those things that feels a little too Raimi to me. Like, it's a little too heightened. Oh, I love lock. it, dude. That is I, so Kevin Coelho, I only man. like it because it, it speaks, I think, to his sort of his sort of being a computer kid. And I don't mean mm-hmm. a computer kid of, like, I'm a computer dork. I mean, like, I've had friends that were way smarter than me that had massive computer rigs and, like, would rig shit so they never had to get up. But and I just don't understand. that if- I appreciate if you're a really smart kid, why do you hook up your door to that gigantic fucking remote control for a remote control airplane like he did? That's just not practical. Peter it's Parker cool, would do dude. that. Listen, no, Carboni, see, look, here's the thing. Would be, it would be like a button that he pushed. Well, he doesn't need money. He probably found that down in the basement and he's like, I'll make do with what I got. Like, he that's, found that's a very expensive, he, sp- he found a very expensive like $200 remote control and not Listen, a button. Anthony, Nicholas. Growing up, my, my brother Matt Scarpino was super into RC planes for one summer. That tracks. Ever since then, we had so much <laughs> shit. We had so much RC plane shit in the garage and my brother was never, my dad's like, I'm not going to throw it. He's going to come back to it one day. I'm like, dad, He's 45. Yep. He's he's married. He's not coming every back. Every time I run into your brother, every time I run into your brother, I'm like, dude, it's a good thing we didn't know each other when we were 12 because we would have enabled way too many oh, fucking dude. collecting hobbies. Like oh it's God, it would have yes. been too much. Yeah, you also um, anyway. Kid be smart. Yep. Uh, so uh, we, uh, down in the basement, while down there, Peter finds his dad's old briefcase uh, that says RP on it. Richard Parker, I think is what his name was. Um, mm-hmm. And inside, he finds a picture of Dr. Connors. He's like, hey, who is this person? Like, we have no idea. But Aunt May clearly knows who this is because she freaks out. Uh, Peter takes his contacts out and tries his father's glasses on uh, while a, uh, a poster of Einstein sticking his tongue out uh, behind him reminds him of the time that Classic. I used to do that joke. And guess what? Kevin and Andy loved it. They lo- watched it. Give it to us, Nick. There I it is. I invented the stars. 
<laughs> it's just like him, isn't it? There. I saw it and I, I was so upset, you guys. I, I want to let you know. It was me. It was Gia. It was Gia's sister and Gia's mm-hmm. sister's boyfriend all watching this movie. And this happens. And I out loud go, oh, no. Yeah. And they're like, what? Yeah. And I'm he like, it's the, the Albert Einstein thing. And they're like, what about it? And I'm like, I hate that I made a noise. And now I need to explain this. Because yeah. it's not good. good. Nothing more <laughs> no. than Nick Scarpino. And they're like, OK, I got it. Then, then we got to move on. Uh, I'll tell you this. There's a disappointment in Gia's eyes when she sees me now that I don't think I'll ever be able to stop. <laughs> I think it's just done. But but, but can I, I tell you something, Nick? That that speaks to a level of craft and dedication on your part. Dedication for to sure. destroy the light in someone's eyes. And oh, I think yeah. I think you know what I mean. Like you, yeah, you you did what you set out to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you're unfortunately reaping what you've sown, yeah. and that's a bummer. And I'm sorry for you, but I'm glad that you were able to reach that initial goal. Listen, uh, man. Can I? The, can I? The meteor that killed the dinosaurs made an impact. There it is. Can Deep I be impact also done by James Mark Horner? Webb. Okay. There it is. Can I be? Can I do a ridiculously fucking Carboni fact for yeah, the right. scene where he's Absolutely. where he's looking things up? So, RP Richard Parker, the name of the name of Peter Parker's dad, also the name of the tiger from Life of Pi. Guy who plays the evil doctor in this movie was one of the was one of the actors in Life of Pi. And when Peter looks up Richard Parker, it shows a thing for the movie The Life of Pi. There, that's all I wanted to say. They made a reference. They understood. I'm that's sorry. like you know what that you this know is what one that of those is. things that I get tweets about where people are like, move along, but I can't because it <laughs> happened and now you have to know it. That's like a new age. That's like a new. Uh, like in like Lethal Weapon in the original Lethal Weapon when they walk out and they see the Lost Boys behind him because Richard Donner produced that and he was directing Lethal Weapon. It's one of those where you're like, yeah, that's pretty fucking cool actually. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I, don't I mind. thought it was neat. Fun little Easter egg. Uh, Peter I'm finds that secret compartment in his dad's briefcase and pulls out the file, the double zero file on it. Why his dad would not bring this with him when he absconded with his wife? Beyond me, I don't know. He's like, I'll just leave it here in this basement where anyone could find it and kill everyone in this house. Um, I like all the nods here with Peter being all sciencey. We talked about that. He reads the file, which is double zero decay rate algorithm. And that's a lot of words that I don't know what any of them mean. Uncle Ben comes in to have a heart to heart with Peter and he tells him the name of the man. He's like, listen, man, we lied to you down there. I don't want to, I don't want to have this kind of relationship with you. You're becoming a man. So you deserve to know the truth. That person in the picture is Dr. Kurt Connors. Uh, and Peter tells Uncle Ben, he's like, you know what? You're a pretty great dad. And then he sets about unfolding the mystery of his father's work. Are, and that are little we pre- supposed to think that Uncle Ben and Aunt May, if this had continued to be a trilogy or whatever, like it was supposed to be, do Uncle Ben and Aunt May know more than they're like way more than they're saying? Is that no, the implication? No, I just think that they I think that they didn't really know what was going on. He mentions that 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 Richard, his brother, was like a very secretive person. And I think they just know that whatever he was doing got him into trouble. Do they and avoid so, it? Yeah. 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 So I think they're just trying like them knowing. I mean, obviously, like, listen, if you had a relationship with your brother and he was working on this project with a guy for a long time, you'd know who that person was. You'd know it was. Dr. Yeah, Dr. I just I, I, yeah, I just think it's weird because I don't understand their motivation for hiding it. Uh, I think in that they just were shocked and, and they realized that, like, I mean, you know, he disappeared yeah. for years and he um, hasn't come this, back. So they're, presumably he's dead. You know, this this just feels to me like. We got to build a universe. We got to build a universe. Marvel, Marvel lapped us in the time it took us to make this movie. Right. You know what but I mean? The reason I like the scene, though, is because in the same Raimi verse, they would have it would have been four movies before there was a resolution to this. And in this one, they're like, Ben just comes in. Like, it's same with him telling yeah. Gwen Stacy Spider-Man. It's like nobody wants this melodrama friends bullshit. Like, just resolve it right now so we can get to the more fun yeah. stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, he looks up, uh, uh, Dr. Connors and finds an article he wrote or a book he wrote it. about a world without weakness. And it's all done on Bing, Andy. And Dude, who would have thought Bing this... would be the powerhouse they are today? What's this fucking Mike might makes right bio that Oscorp allows their, their scientists to write for their investor public facing website. Especially I will eradicate all weakness in the world. There are scientists that are white and with blonde hair. You're like, Oh, yeah. I don't know. This is a good luck. Oscorp. I, I, I was born I, physically less than perfect. And I refuse yeah. to allow it to happen. We are anymore. trying to make the perfect human being. The I not only chill out Danny deck chair. I not only love, or not, I not only dislike the, the, sort of outcome of all of it but i just really don't like the execution of showing him on the internet and it's just 
there's like a lot of ways to easily fuck it up and they easily fucked it up of just like well, I hate the way the camera's moving on yeah. the screen. I just hate that shit. No, that means, it just looks inter- so that bad. means it's interesting internet, dude. That means he's finding things. <laughs> Literally, like if you just if it was a in... static screen, if it was a static screen, you'd be like, that guy's not finding shit. Boring. That's boring shit. <laughs> what they I want to know is where was some of this camera work later on when we're doing when we're doing like the climactic action scene of this film? <laughs> <laughs> he saved it all for the Google search. Here's how, here's Peter's how gonna bing and I gotta make Make it exciting. <laughs> they first off, they got paid by Bing a lot, and Bing was like, "We're not just a normal search engine. We are an energetic search engine." We're and they're cool like, "Okay." Engine. And so they called up James Horner. They're like, "Hey, you got that kid that did the soundtrack for this? We're gonna need him to do the motion graphics for this Bing <laughs> search." And this kid's like, well, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> I digress. Uh, uh, so he's like, "Hey," he does what he finally finds him, and he's like, "Oh, this guy works at Oscorp, which I'm sure was the first search result that he found." But he was like, "Let me go through all 20 pages of this before I get to there." So so he heads over to Oscorp with no plan in place. He walks up with the receptionist and is like, hey, I'm, uh, I'm here to talk to Dr. Connors. And she goes, you'll find yourself on the left. And I think I speak for everyone. I say, that's just a weirdly weird way of phrasing that. Are you having right? trouble finding yourself? This yeah. whole sequence, like, she's got to be. She, she, like, I don't know what it is about the way that she's delivering these lines. But I got to assume that that's not how she was in the real life. That maybe we're seeing her through peter's lenses because like this totally feels like when we've talked about another in reviews oh that was so and so's fucking niece working right. on like it, she just feels so out of place and she doesn't feel like she exists in this real world it's yeah. a very poorly written very on the nose scene where- if you would have told me nick that Later on in the movie, Peter Parker discovers that he was hallucinating a lot of shit and she was never there. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be like, sense. oh, that makes sense. She was acting really funky. It's just a really badly kind of not even badly acted. It's just what's the, what are we going for here? Well, it's, it's, weird. It's, it's thematic, right? There's he finds himself obviously to the left where right? he walks to the left. He gets a bit of spider as he finds himself. It's so freaking on the nose. And I'm it's, like, yeah, I was like, did Sam Raimi write that line? What, where's the crash <laughs> zoom? I don't understand what's happening. Uh, the other thing I want to say about this is. I don't care what universe this is or what's going on. Peter Parker doesn't steal a fucking badge. Especially when you see Rodrigo later on screaming, it's me, Rodrigo, you're ruining my life. I've yeah. studied science my entire life. Peter Parker doesn't go, nah, nah, nah. Yeah. We just, <laughs> we just built a super villain out of Rodrigo. Oh, yeah. yeah. He comes He'll back come later. Back. For but sure. Also, but it's, why it's would also- the receptionist not be like, clearly there's an issue here? Right. That man is not, this man is Rodrigo, and this man is not Rodrigo right. that I just spoke to five minutes before. Well, Tim, if you know in, in anything about the Spider Man comic books, like I do, I've read all of them. Oh, they don't them. actually, I'm sorry, I apologize to all you guys, but I'm going to drop a little bit of nerd knowledge on you. No, please do. <laughs> all right. Finally. In every run of the Spider Man comic books, since its inception, they've never had anything like a driver's license or a passport or any identification <laughs> for people, right? And also except for, except for the mutant and hero registration acts. Those are the only two really, kinds of ID that you can get. That's when it Marvel's started coming America. into play. Right. <laughs> Other, before mutants were a thing, people didn't know they were like, well just take your word for it, sir. Yeah. Please feel free. Walk into this super secretive, very high tech, probably military funded Oscorp with nothing more than your word. Why would come on. There's one thing left. She's like, you're Roberto and Rodrigo. And he's like, yeah, let me see your ID. You're done. It doesn't but matter. It, but I mean, we also do get the, okay, Mr. Guevara, mm-hmm. gracias. Then yeah. I, not a- like, I like that. That's <laughs> cute. <laughs> Obviously, like, I, that's the one line that I think saves this scene because she so clearly, so clearly gives zero shits about her job here. Yeah. yeah. That maybe she, maybe she would just allow this to happen. And I do think the actress did a great job there. Yeah. Uh, I love that subtext. Yeah. Peter heads upstairs and oh my god, who should we find leading this tour group? But one Gwen Stacy senior wow. of town high. Love it. Still oh wearing the old thigh highs. That's so crazy. It's- Not only is it is it magical internship day? Oh, we get in? <laughs> Gwen Gwen Stacy. Man, the only thing that would be crazier is if somebody bumped randomly into Peter Parker and a <laughs> double zero was on a file folder that they dropped. That would be crazy, but that can't possibly happen. Go on. No, what did, no, what did no, Peter no. and Gwen Here's say to each other? The coincidence is that's Spider-Man, man. Like, that's what we like from the comics. And then it's all connected. Hey, so we can't baby, complain that's Spider-Man. when it happens, dude. <laughs> no, like, I think that it, that shit's good. I love this, Gwen. I love Gwen I have... being smart. I think it leaves leads so much credence to the relationship between Gwen and Peter. And I love the back and forth we get about who's first in class, who's second yes. in class. Oh, I love that. That is so goddamn awesome. Everybody watch Spectacular fucking Spider-Man. No, I... 
I love I love that the the I just the the internship thing itself just just bugged me because I'm like Peter Parker wouldn't do that. Peter Parker wouldn't do that, and it's a weird coincidence that he's here on internship day. And I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. No, and I don't like the fact, it. and I don't like the fact that there are more lizards in New York for no reason. I, they, we'll get there. There are a We're lot of coincidences. Go on. <laughs> uh, I, I will say to that degree, like I think there was a smarter way of doing this, right? If Gwen Stacy works there, there could have been a character moment where she's like, "I'll introduce you to Doctor Connors." But yeah, I do like yes. the scene where she, I do like the scene where she decides to cover for him because again, she likes him, right? And that's another bit of like subtle like storytelling of like building their character relationship with each other where he's like who is this person she goes he's one of midtown high's best and brightest he's second in his class and he goes under his breath he goes second he goes yeah he goes you sure, you sure about, about that, that? It's so good I love it's good. It. they're great it's so i love good. it it's like get also- everyone let them have the room <laughs> yeah let them have the room Everybody's like, whoa, we got to get out of this lab because they are, how are their clothes off already? <laughs> I, They're about to rip our clothes off. It's going to be disgusting. I, I do want to say they call it Midtown Science High, which, which I think is something that they did in a couple of the animated series as well. But the problem that I have when they call it Midtown Science High is what is Flash Thompson the doing Flash there? Thompson. <laughs> even Midtown <laughs> Science High has a football team. Parents. Yeah, exactly. It's the football yeah. team. They even deal with that in Spectacular Spider-Man. They it's do. Like, it but is, it's, it's just, football it's scholarship stuff. Uh, Peter accidentally, of course, knocks that file over there. Uh, but the character, uh, Rajit Ratha, and we see the double zero logo on it. And he's like, watch what you're <gasps> fucking doing, kid. And then Peter uh, follows him over to the biocable development unit and just I'm su- easily hacks his way to this overly designed, oh, highly Oh, no. Lock. I'm surprised really quick before we get to that terrible part. That like Rajit just didn't stab him through the chest. Like this guy was so mad at Peter Parker for touching yeah. him. Dude, I like, thought this he was guy gonna snap his neck evil. and throw him out a window. <laughs> yeah. There is no in a movie full of subtlety. Let me tell you about Doctor Rajit and how he has zero. We know who the bad guy is villain. in this film. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. Also, he's in all black. He's wearing like an all black suit. You're like, okay, that's the guy. That's the bad guy. For so sure. this this is one of those movie moments I was talking about earlier, where like this movie doesn't have too many things that are like this is the worst thing I've ever seen, but it has a lot of things that take you out of the moment where you're like. Yeah. This is such a stupid movie thing. And this is such a stupid movie thing. We have Peter Parker looking over from down a goddamn hallway to this data pad that is the most complicated lock i've ever seen but it's also not that complicated (laughs) like there's like a bunch of just lines and circles and he goes okay here's here's how this goes exactly the the, the game watch the the water he used bing tim (laughs) tim (laughs) not just the the spider-man you've played the spider-man video games you've played the hacking mini game right (laughs) Oh my God! My Not least favorite that, part of the video game was did in the you movie. notice that the Bro, cover, that's... the cover of Doctor Connors' book, is literally the exact find the sequence bar thing from oh Spider Man PS4. Oh, I didn't that's know that. That's so fucking funny. But I just love that. Yeah, he sees it and then just casually walks up and just does the thing. There's no fingerprint scanner. There's mm. no. Fa- it looks fancy, but it ain't fancy. He's Listen, Rodrigo. If, if He's you, here for the internship. If you want to like this movie, you gotta just sort of not worry about yeah. what happens next what you okay. didn't, I'm what fine you didn't with it know because oh go on go on i was gonna say what you didn't know there tim is before he got bit by a spider became spider-man in the day prior he was bit by a hawk became hawkman and he has really really good vision so the spider-man just doubles okay. up all the other powers yeah, yeah crazy. Mm. i uh crazy. i do i do want to say after three movies of uh of raimi of like sort of raimi verse 1960s super science jack kirby stuff I love this weird ass like spinning spider room. Oh, me too. <laughs> like I it's, it's so stunning. cool looking. Oh, I think it's stunning, and I love that he walks into the middle of it because he's more in awe of it than he is scared. But then when the spiders start falling on him, I hate it. I love I it. Spiders. That's such a fun moment. Like I he's just it. like, ugh. There are like eighty of them. Yeah, like, I don't like it. They just drop spiders on him. Like, his oh, reaction, I like, like oh fuck. I don't like it at all. <laughs> yeah, he just tenses up. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I like it because it makes us feel scared. And it makes mm-hmm. us feel uncomfortable. Oh. And I know that spiders are an easy like rush to make people feel uncomfortable, but we rarely see that with the Spider-Man movies. And like even the first one had a couple moments. The the Raimi ones had a couple moments they were trying to like evoke that. I think that this literally just having spiders on you is scary. You know what's yeah, even scarier? Creepy. Having a lot of spiders on you. And oh. what if those spiders is also science? That's the mm-hmm. ickiest they can be. Spiders. Uh, when I say I hate it, I mean I hate it because it evokes that emotion. I love, gotcha. I love all gotcha. the spiders. I hate it because I just watched Arachnophobia, and now every time I put my slippers on, I'm like, is there a fucking spider in there? Am I going to die? I'm old. My heart can't take it. Arachnophobia? The thrill Oh, man. Go back and watch it again because it still slaps. 
<laughs> Downstairs, Rafa tells Dr. Connor to speed it up or Norman Osbald, Osbald, Osborne, Oswald. Norman Osbald copper pot. Thank you. We'll bite the bullet. And then Peter gets bitten by a spider and Gwen kicks him out for disobeying her. Now, uh, this Peter, I believe, doesn't tell anybody he got bit by a spider. Toby Maguire, Peter, would have immediately run to the fucking school nurse. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, this Peter is like, attention. I'm not even Rodrigo. I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go try to find like a first aid kit. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Toby, Toby Maguire would have been like in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. And then like they would have hit a speed bump and he would have like fallen out of the car like, wah, wah, I'm Toby, Toby Maguire. Maguire would have asked Harry Osborne to fucking suck the poison out. You know what I mean? Like Harry, that's like that's poison. Thing. Harry, please, I'm poisoned. <laughs> you mean. Uh, Peter passes out on the subway, and an asshole decides to put a beer bottle on him. So Peter wakes up and sticks to the ceiling, and everyone's like, oh, "That's weird." And then he sticks to a woman's shirt and like accidentally this, rips Andy. it off. I don't like the scene at all. You don't. You two don't like this. Tell me more. No, it's. I think it's a very. I think they could have done a better version of showing Peter discovering his powers here. I think the scene is clunky. It's not that fun, and it's. I don't like anyone in this scene. I think everyone mm -hmm. in the scene is like just kind of an asshole. That's what it comes off to me. Yeah, like, I, I think it sucks. Bottle, like, weird. I think it sucks that Peter winds up hurting a lot of people who are just trying to get home. Yeah, <laughs> like like that's a problem. And also, like as much as I had a problem with the constant unmasking in the Raimi verse, yo, it's impossible for everyone to not know who Spider Man is in this right. film. And this is that because... this is a scene that's about that. Because sometimes Andrew Garfield, like sometimes Peter in this movie, his head gets hot. So he's like, fuck it. I'll just take the mask off. Fuck it. I'm just going to take the I'm mask off. I'm running around my own school. I'm oh, running my, around my, my own high school. You mean my dad, Richard Parker, the spider scientist yeah. with all the files on him? Let's not, um, let's not even get start. Well, we'll get there. Well, we'll just talk we'll about there. it right now. Anthony, I want you to go, <laughs> I want you to go into business with me. You okay. and I are going to start a super secret science division of Oz Corp where we make biochemical we have the mm. patent for this we're the only people in the world that are making this we're probably the only people in the world that have these spiders and this technology and this decaying algorithm that can make this love it oh but wait i just saw a youtube video to nfts kid. let's give it up and go into NFTs. let's get some nfts but before we do that i think i saw a youtube video of a kid who we've met before mm. who we all know so, someone so i'm sorry not a kid we've met before a kid dressed as a spider swinging around mm. new york Using our bio cable technology. Oh, Nick, you know what's funny is th this kid who was dressed as a spider, he's actually on 13 different cell phones and security cameras. Just take it off the spider mask. That's Rodrigo <laughs> Guevara. I, I listen, I understand that it's not believable in this movie that he would be able to develop that science with limited, like, abil uh, limited, like, resources that he has. Mm -hmm. But he just opens up, like, it's like he ordered the biochemical. Like yeah. from Amazon, and it came like next day, and he just he just opens it up, and he's like, "I got these cool little cartridges now." Costco, a little Costco order right here. <laughs> I, I have some science questions too, because Everyone like not only is. is he not only is he ordering the 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 bio cable, but like later on, I just want to say the NYPD has some like straight up cyberpunk weaponry that I don't understand, and so I'm wondering how much science exists in this world, and how much science does not yet. How surprised are we by the spidered man? And the lizarded man, and yeah. how not are we? Because sometimes we also have cyberpunk weapons. Right. Here's the thing. I, I I know I'm into a lot of shit for this, and at this point, I don't fucking care. I genuinely enjoy this movie, and I think it does a good job. I Definitely. like the world that the 2012, like the, the Amazing Spider-Man universe. I enjoy a lot, and I think they do a good job of making Oscorp different than the yeah. Oscorps we've seen before. So I'm not that shocked that these technologies exist and that they are accessible and able to just be bought by normal people. <laughs> and if you are a smart person like Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker that we've seen, it's not that crazy for us to be able to jump there. And I also don't think this Peter Parker gives that much of a fuck about his identity being revealed this early, at least. I think yeah. by the end of this movie, right. when we when he has things to protect and he understands the importance of his identity, I think that is a different story. And when we get into the next movie, I feel that we'll see where I'm at. But it's like I like that this universe is different and it had to be different. And I think because it's different, it's worse in a lot of ways or it's worse off. But I do think that they build a narrative that is mostly believable. And this movie is just a, another example of sometimes answering questions just makes us ask more questions. And it's like us being told this is where the webs come from. That's not organic. We're yeah. like, huh, that's fucking weird. What about this? This is this instead of just, yeah, 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 it's fucking webs. He made them.
Like I they also do. don't mind. MCU. You know, I also wouldn't mind like maybe he didn't order them. Like maybe he maybe he fucking stole them. Maybe he got a crate of it. Uh, maybe he got a crate of it, and then he because he says later on, oh, it's just something I whipped up. So he probably is making his own like variant of this stuff right. and just using theirs as like a blueprint. Right. My thing is, I'm just a little the rules of the world and the rules of the reality are just a little wibbly wobbly to me in a way that becomes for all of spider, all of amazing Spider-Man two's problems. I understand how sciencey that reality is in this one. I just feel a little bit adrift in some moments. That's all. Yeah. But I mean, that's, that's the thing too, is like, it's just, it's for me, it's too close to, to home of where the villain is. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and it's one of those things where I'm like, he discovers who Peter Parker is by looking on the back of Peter Parker's camera, which obviously I, I, I love because, you know, you do that. You put you pee touch the back of your stuff when you're in high school because you don't want people, you know, if you lose it, people give it. Excuse me. What do you do? You pee touch it. Have you ever owned a brother pee touch? Yeah, Tim. Yeah, <laughs> now who looks stupid? You ever had you, you ever had a, you ever had a that word? But Anthony's on my side because we're you ever had the pee touch, you ever had the pee touch of a brother. Do you know what pee touches? I have never ever heard of this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> uh, they're they're a they're a kind of label maker that is very, very popular. It's but a P-Touch label horrible. maker. Kevin knows what it is, and Kevin's staying silent right now because he likes watching me fucking squirm, but he knows what a P-Touch machine is. Kevin and I, I mean, when you say a <laughs> when you say a brother, the a brother P-Touch, it definitely without context sounds horrible. It's Cause, true. Because what because immediately the maker of technology and P-Touch is the device name. Immediately what my mind goes to is and it's nothing like overly sexual perverted. It's an older brother saying, stay away from my shit and grab and like rubs his dick and then rubs the thing. says, so like, okay. don't touch that. that that's mine. Sexual. Right. That's what yeah. I think. Okay. You know, right. brother, you pee touch. but the older brother, anyway. he's, he's of age. So <laughs> sorry. I, th I think I'd, everyone understands the cartridge idea, but it is Tim. You're right. Like, I think we're just so lucky to have had the MCU built out because we have this great a resource for a technology that needs to be given to people, which is the Stark <laughs> industry, right? It's Tony Stark being like, here's all the stuff you need, kid. And we're like, cool, we don't question yeah. it anymore. Yeah. But in this uh, that one, is it's its own cons, weird. right? Like, I mean, that's the thing is like, and I'm happy that we're in, in this series of in review for the rewatches. Right. We're going to rewatch Homecoming and Far From Home. And that'll be the first time we've ever done that of watching Raimi, watching Webb, and then watching the um, uh, John Watts uh, du duology so far, soon to be trilogy. Like, I'm excited to watch them back to back because obviously we all fucking love the MCU, Peter Parker and Spider-Man, but that's a very different take on the character because he has stark technology in so right. many mm -hmm. different ways. So it's like seeing, especially this kind of middle uh, universe, like the, the concessions it made, the choices it made, like it's, it's interesting because this is modern. Like 2012 is not, I mean, I guess it was almost 10 years ago at this point, but like that is comparable to these movies in a way the Raimi movies are not comparable to mm -hmm. these. And that's, it's not even fair to compare them in that way. Cause they're just mm -hmm. different. I also want to throw out a little, little tiny kind of just an, as an aside. And it's something that I didn't really understand, but, but I think brother all... is the name of the manufacturer. Fuck. Like they make printers. Thank you. And, and, and then sewing he his father, is the, the name of the label. father yeah. company, like the, <laughs> is there a sister company? Um, we always compare um, Tobey Maguire to Andrew Garfield to Tom oh, Holland. Mm -hmm. And I feel like 90% of people on the planet do it because, in terms of like that movie is better. This franchise is better. The acting here was better. That's at least what I've always thought it was. But there is some people out there who only argue how successful their Spider-Man is. Right. And I didn't know that. I like Tim. I didn't know this is a thing that people on the internet were actually arguing about. So when I say I like Andrew Garfield way better as Spider Man, and people have told back, to, and I've seen people fighting in threads on my tweets, and they've been like, "Yeah, but he fucking let her die," and I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> you, oh. <laughs> you like Tobey Maguire more because he's a more successful superhero." <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, <laughs> it okay. is. Well, then I guess what you guys are right. You're all right. <laughs> it's so oh. bizarre. I did. I never knew that was a thing until like the last like three or four months when we've been talking about leading up to doing these rewatches. Huh. And I've seen people arguing in my comments and I go, oh, my God, I like not everybody does this granted, but a few people just talk about how successful the superhero is in getting the mission done. Got it. It's I, really weird. Andy, I have done this before with 007. And why I don't like certain 007 movies. Well, you're saying the whole movie as a whole, right? But you're not like 
Yeah, I'm not I, saying. But you yeah, could I then say, saying, yeah, yeah, you could then say, yeah, that guy was more successful, but I don't like the other person's performance yeah. a lot better or depiction a lot better. Mm-hmm. So bizarre. I just wanted to throw which that is, out. Which is weird because we all know that the best uh, 007 is David Niven from the original Casino Royale, and nobody ever argues that. Never watched it. Uh, that's because that was a comedy and no one's ever seen it. Uh, <laughs> as we move on, uh, Peter comes home and he's super sweaty and Aunt May's like, oh, I'm so innocent. He Maybe he's been drinking, but Uncle Ben has been to war. He knows a man that's tripped out on acid when he sees one. Uh, Peter's like, wow, your meatloaf's great, which tips Uncle Ben off. He's like, nobody likes your meatloaf. He's like, I made you millions of meatloaf. This is a moment. cute moment. Cute. Yeah. So cute. Uh, upstairs, and then Peter's I love like, the little I love the little can about to fall out and Andrew Garfield being like, I got it, I got it. Okay. Like he's, he's just such a natural actor. I love Dude. him. Yeah, and he, this is a perfect example of what I was saying earlier of like same exact written on the script for a different actor. It wouldn't work. But because he's so charismatic, it kind of works, even though this whole thing's fucking weird. And weird as shit. It, had they just set it up, I swear to God, there must be a deleted scene that explains like why he'd be more hungry. Like, because like, it, it's just it, the fact that this boy would decide to eat frozen macaroni and cheese. And we mm-hmm. know that. My brother, Cool Greg, did not eat the frozen macaroni and cheese no. when given to at no. Outback. And if he wouldn't do it, Andrew Garfield's not fucking no. doing that. At that I'm moment, Tim, I'm like, him. is he Venom? Yeah, right. That's the thing. It's like it's it's weird <laughs> kind of tinges of this, like elements that the movie didn't need. The story didn't need. Yeah. And like I agree. Andrew Garfield sells it because he's that damn good. But like it, this just felt weird and it could have had an easy setup, but we, we never got it. So it just is awkward. Uh, upstairs, Peter makes uh, Dr. Pimple Popper's day when he pulls out a string from his neck. Oh, and attached to string, it. man. Blah. Oh. It's gross. Oh. I also want to say it's for all the New Yorkers out there, yeah, that's fine. I, totally under, I totally understand that you thought the same thing I had, which is if Peter Parker lives in Queens, how did he get off the train at Coney Island? Anyway, moving oh. on. Everyone still, in, in my room <laughs> said the exact same thing. I'm like, eh, I don't know That's New York that well. That's the farthest south you can be in Brooklyn. Queens is all the way up here. Well, I, I, assume, not- I, I assume he had fallen asleep, rid the train all the way to the end, and then had to get on another train to ride it back, which is why he was so I don't late. know. Maybe that's why he has to eat so much meatloaf. Exactly. <laughs> they say that the New York subway. He ran really all the way back. <laughs> It's true. Uh, the next morning, we get a montage of Peter not understanding his new strength and completely destroying the bathroom. I love this uh, scene. Love it. Fucking love it, dude. Him hitting the alarm clock is just so ridiculously <laughs> graphic. But like, I, and, and I feel like, totally... again, that wouldn't work. But the fact that it's so quickly cut into this entire montage, I absolutely love this. I love this. Total, it's a totally different style. You remember, like, Toby is, like, looking at his fingertips, and he's looking at everything, and he's thinking about it. And Andrew Garfield is just so fucking tired from accidentally beating up people on the subway last night yeah. that like when he explodes the entire tube of toothpaste, he's just like, uh, toothpaste. Like he doesn't <laughs> even fucking know, man. I love this. He just literally wipes it off like some of it onto his brush from the mirror. It's so fucking That's good. Uh, then he looks up spider bikes on the Bing as I'm eating a burrito and it really grosses me out. And then the keys come off of his keyboard and somehow that was even That's grosser good. for some reason. Uh, then he heads over to Dr. Connors' house and spills the bean about being rich Richard Parker's wow, son. Damn, hold on. I had a joke for that moment. Can we pretend? Can you repeat that last line about the keyboard thing? And then he types in. He's as he's typing into the Bing. He it starts making a funny noise, and he, he right. holds his hands up, and his, the keys are stuck to his fingers. Hey Windows. I, oh, fuck. No, no, no. You got it. <clears throat> he and didn't want sticky keys it. on. Hey, hey <laughs> you held down Shift for five seconds. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Don't hit that insert button. Nobody wants that. Nobody. Hey does. Kevin. By the way, we don't need to cut that down at all that just it played <laughs> so just keep Maybe it going you thought it was good okay yeah it played Oof. kevin's making some stock trades right now kevin's not paying attention <laughs> to anything we're doing uh <laughs> and rightfully so uh let's see dr connor's tells peter that his father's uh, uh bred those spiders uh which cracked open their research uh and then richard disappeared leaving connor's in the lurch and he says say you got it to work what how much of the cross species would take over and he's like that's always the problem and he goes the decay rate algorithm and reese ivins is like how did you know that? What? How did you know? And then Peter grabs a notepad and writes his father's formula down on the notepad. Um, and he's like, here you go. And he's like, whoa, who came up with that? He goes, I came up with it, which is a lie. You know how his father's. You know how he remembered the formula, though? Hmm. Before he got bit by the hawk, he was bit by an elephant. There it and is. And became elephant man. Really good memory. There it really is. Good memory. What's, the, what's the elephant bite look like, Andy? <laughs> oh, it's massive. <laughs> it's, it's whole, <laughs> his whole torso is missing. You know? <laughs> uh, I do want to say... Reese Ethan's here in the first act of this movie before 
that he, before he's sort of left to fend for himself with the material. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think he does That's a such great a good way of putting it. Yeah. He's just sort of left alone. Like Mark Webb has other things to do and you can just watch him trying to figure out what he's supposed to do with this guy as he's transforming. But I like this scene. I like the mix of sort of suspicion because clearly there was something else going on between him and Richard, but also just like he cares about this kid. Um, I do get some, the only thing that makes this, this hit a little less than I think it should have is just, man, it's just proximity to Raimi again. We just, just a couple of years ago, we had had, we had had Alfred Molina with this same relationship to Peter Parker and it yep. just, it doesn't hit as hard because we had already seen this very recently. And that's kind of a bummer. Do you but think I mean, at any moment there was supposed to be sort of this hint towards like, you know, we, we see Peter put on his glasses earlier in the movie and then um, Uncle Ben says, man, you look just like your dad. Mm -hmm. Or is it Sally Field who says, I forget who says it's it. It's Uncle Ben. But that first moment that he's introduced to Dr. Connors, he has his glasses on. And I feel like that was supposed to sort of be this kind of like, huh, you look really familiar, you know? Uh, I, and I wish they kind of played with that element a bit more. Yeah, you get, he has a look on his face at first of surprise, but then when he sees Peter's face, he's kind of like, oh, this is, maybe he's not consciously making it, but he's looking at this yeah. kid's face and he's going, that's a smart kid and I trust this kid. You yeah. know what I mean? I, f I, felt, I felt a little bit of that too, Andy. I wish they had teased that out a little bit more and yeah. made it a little bit more explicit. I just want to call out to, to Reese, uh, Ethan's credit. I hope we're saying mm -hmm. his name right, even though I'm pretty sure I'm slaughtering it. Uh, he played Spike in Notting Hill. He did. He was Spike okay. in Notting Hill. He was Don't Danny Deck Chair. Mm -hmm. he's, he's good. Okay, good actor. He's good range. actor. We call this range, Andy. Mm -hmm. He's very, and I mean, look, man, when he's playing sweet in this movie, he feels very sweet when he's like, on. when he's like, depressed like when he's in those moments of darkness that were like we were so close to like fixing this yeah. thing that i hate about myself like he has real moments where he's performing i just i feel like i feel like like y'all were saying it was either lost in the edit or it wasn't it wasn't made explicit enough in the material but we lose something of this character for sure uh the next day in gym class flash accidentally messes up a girl's poster and becomes a comically overdone bully so peter Hated. palms a baseball in his face and embarrasses him and then knocks him down and then dunks on his ass and destroys the the, the backboard now we hate scene, this scene hate it. we hate that we hate this scene but it's more real and more likely up until the until peter fakes the funk on the nasty dunk i i feel like this feels more real than the spider-man one flash fight you know what I mean? No, but or from the Spider-Man three basketball scene. Here's here's the difference in my opinion is that the the Flash character didn't knock over her paint on purpose. Mm -hmm. He he the ball just got a wild rebound happened and it knocks over her paint. She goes, "Hey, you did that on purpose," and he goes, "No, I didn't, but I should have." And it's like, no, but he doesn't only say that. He says, "You better watch your back." And it doesn't matter what you could have done the rest of this scene, Carboni. Like, it's bad already, right? It's yeah. from that line of dialogue. Like, like why is he so threatening cartoony. this this fucking live-action Velma from Scooby-Doo? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, what did she do to him? Good, right? The whole thing's not very good. I don't really like anyone in the scene. Um, I think the only sympathetic character in this is the paint, because it got spilled. Yeah. But now, and we, I don't are even... supposed to, we are supposed to... You know, when Uncle Ben comes in after this, we are supposed to dislike Peter a little bit in this scene. And I think bit, that's yeah. okay. Traveled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Traveled. Because of the travel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's just something about this. I think for me, because it goes so big in the end, and the problem isn't that like, you know, it isn't that Peter just like shoved Flash down or like disrupted basketball practice. It's that he had to break the backboard like Shaq. Yeah, in like yeah. this really weird way that I'm just like, why did it, how did Listen, this scene end Carmel, here? Sometimes, and I speak for Andy when I say this, sometimes when you're up there in the air and you're, you're fucking flying and you hit yeah. that, you hit that rim just the right way and it shatters the backboard. I mean, you're talking about the art of the dunk. I, I mean, I'm definitely talking about the art of the dunk. Like I've been, how many, Andy, how many times you've been there? Five, 10 times in your career? So you many. I mean, that's, backboard. it's a, it's a gift and a responsibility. It's a gift and a curse, you know, with greatness comes great responsibility. Exactly. Yeah. All of those things yeah. are almost what uncle Ben should have said <laughs> and exactly what he did say in this film. So, you know, but I will it. say I do like, I do like Andrew Garfield holding the ball and being like, come on, flash, take it, take it. Yeah. Like, I, I like that sort of characterization that Andrew Garfield is putting out there, but, um, 
it didn't really need to end with that. I think it just yeah. could have been a a shove where maybe Flash shoves him and then finally he's like, I'm strong enough to do this, fuck you sort of thing. Right. I we think, don't need you jumping 30 feet in the air. Yeah, the difference for me is that in the to- in the Sam Raimi one version of the scene, you were like, yeah, Peter, kick his fucking ass. This guy's an yeah. asshole. And in this one, you're like, dude. Because we dick. hate Joe Manganiello and right. everybody tweet at Joe Manganiello that we hate him as a person. That's Please. not true. But in this movie, I, I, I agree that this scene isn't the best way to do it. But I think that this scene is more of a kind of like uh, setup scene for what we get later with Flash mm-hmm. that I think is really fucking good. No. And I think that like the, the entire Flash storyline of the three scenes we get of him in this movie like this being what it was where it's not just peter kind of like being able to one-up him but like one-upping him in a showy ass way i think was kind of necessary to have the flash moment hit later that like it it really does hit with me where i'm like damn peter's kind of in the wrong here but he's grieving so it makes him in the right and flash is not a evil person but this scene makes him seem evil which i think is you need to have him seem evil to then him not being evil means something. Yeah, well, but it's, this it's, scene, I think this scene is not, now that we've talked this through, in my head, I'm thinking this scene is actually not the Flash scene. This is Bonesaw. We're watching, this is yeah. him against Bonesaw. Yeah. Just Very being, good full, point. being full of himself, not taking the other people into account. Like, this is Bonesaw. It's not Flash. Think of the um, people. Think of the, think of the... People, people around you, Peter. Nobody wants to see a dunk that violent, you know? Dude. Yeah, it's tough. Okay, this is practice, Peter. bro. Practice. At least. Everyone in high school would have fucking lost their shit if that happened in the most hype oh way God. imaginable. I mean, you're talking to all the coaches. You're talking to scouts and spa- like, <laughs> who is this kid? He just leapt fucking. He was above the backboard. Nobody's yeah. ever no done coach, that. <laughs> no coach says call his guardian and make him pay for that backboard. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> Peter, no, have you that thought doesn't about happen. playing basketball for us, Peter? That's the conversation with the coach. Uh, yeah, they do call I, Ben, of course, and yeah. Ben comes in and he says, so uh, all this was a, it was about getting, getting even. And he was like, well, the guy deserved it, yada, yada, yada. And then Ben kind of lets him off here. He tells him that he had, he's like, listen, change uh, is, is going to happen, Peter. It's what the hell? I, oh, he's like, listen, I had to change shifts to uh, to come to come deal with this. You got to go pick up Aunt May from work later. And he's like, no problem. And then he looks over and he sees Gwen and he's like, oh, she looks familiar. Hey, he's like, that's the girl on your computer, right? Hey, you're on his computer, which is I'm the his, best. I'm his probation officer. <laughs> I'm his probation officer. You're on his computer. Like, what a great wingman Uncle Ben is here, right? Yeah. Setting him up. And then, of course, she's like, I'm, I'm on your computer. He goes, yeah, you're you were part of the debate club. I was uh, I was, I was, was touching up stuff in the picture. They're she goes, you, you were so touching, you were touching up stuff. fucking cute. Yeah. Holy shit. They're so – she does that little spin – when she's walking away in this one, and I just want to die. You're They're smiling just... the whole time. Emma yeah. Stone has a Ugh. way of looking at Emma Stone has a way of looking at Andrew Garfield in this that makes me blush when I'm watching it, and I can't. I'm not even like in the scene. But I've, hey. I've seen I've seen tweets recently about the Taylor Swift album that just came out, and people going like like crying because they're listening to an album, and then and then the the woman saying that her husband was like, hey. Are you good? Like you're in a loving relationship. And she's like, no, I'm not. And like with this, I'm just like, I'm in love. I'm in love. Yeah, just like yeah. Andrew Garfield. Is. It's I, so just weird. Like, just like that Andy Jake Gyllenhaal almost was Spider-Man. It's Spider-Man oh, shit, too. You're right. Well, do you it's think, all connected. Do you think that you or anyone you know would be able to survive Emma Stone flirting with you? No. 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 Well, let's put it this no. way. All right, all I just right, don't think I could. Old. If I were single in high school and, and and Emma Stone flirted with me, it would be like devastating. It would just, I'd be like, this is going to be, this is going to kill me. This I'm going to get I, in trouble. This is going to be trouble. I will fuck this up. Yeah. yeah. Gonna, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't survive Andrew Garfield flirting with me in that Straight situation. Up. I mean, no. that's like both of them. And Same I, and energy. I, I think the movie does a good job of making the, each other feel that way too. Like there is a nice balance of, they both realize they're right for each other, but they're also like, oh, I'm not good enough for them. Like throughout God, the whole just, thing, I really enjoy uh, it. The whole like, I'm just so busy right now. Oh yeah, me too. I'm like in the middle of, and that's like, just like, God, you guys, I just, we should all leave. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. Again, this, this, what happens next in the scene, I, I, I have a little note here to just put it there. He asks her out, but he never actually asks her out. Mm-hmm. He just sort of stumbles his way through it, and she sort of stumbles her way through accepting it, and then they just make a date as Phantom Planet oh. plays. And you're we like, we could, or we could, or we could, 
Or we could also, I mean, she goes, yeah, and then we'll she goes, go yeah, yeah, either one is good for yeah. me. And they like, nobody's, they're just, just, just have sex. They're Make flustered. Just they are flustered. Sex. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Let's see. And of course, this, all this energy, Andy, has to go one place and one place only. When you're this pent up, you got to go skateboard dance out that fucking morning. I hate it. Man. I hate and he it. ends up just skateboarding to his it's, it, This is, listen, guys, everyone, oh, uh, like Star Lord one. makes a fucking like Kevin Bacon reference. Like he makes a flash dance, re- or not a flash dance, uh, uh, which we'll call it reference, and everyone's like, oh, this is great. This is the epitome of Kevin Bacon being like, this small town, okay, doesn't let me dance. And I got to go to a warehouse, Tim, and I got to flip kick my way around this fucking warehouse. <laughs> and I got to get this energy out. Otherwise, I'm going to explode, right? That's what this is. And Well, the same way when we were talking before about how, Jesus, like, not flash dance. All we see Peter do up until up until this is kind of skate down a hallway a little bit. And I think just like just like we just got our bone saw scene, like instead of getting Tobey Maguire, like very carefully testing his powers in a very scientific way. I think this kid is like, I wasn't good at skateboarding. Am I better at skating now? Like and he's testing the limits of his powers and his coordination with this. And I that. Watching this scene now, I don't mind it as much as I did the first time. I don't mind Peter Parker skateboarding. I don't hate I, the idea. I take it as far. Go for it, Andy. I was going to say, I don't hate the idea of it. I don't like the execution of it. And that's always a lot of my issues with yeah. most of these superhero movies. It's like, I just don't, whether it's, maybe it's the music that's playing. Maybe it's the slow-mo. Um, this is where he sort of gets the idea of swinging with a web, which is like, they they're all good in theory when you see him like written down on the script or like maybe in, a, in an outline of like and he goes and skateboards because he's super stoked and then he learns how to swing with it. These are sort of things that need to happen in order for the movie to uh, advance. Mm-hmm. And I just don't love uh, maybe it's the song that's playing. I don't know. I it's just the song is the song. And it's the fact that when they do do slow motion, it's like a weird it's not really shot in slow motion sometimes. So it's got like a bad mm-hmm. TV effect to it that kind of ruins the scene. It's but, a coming yeah. of age. Like that's, I think that's it's just, all I think of. I think it's, it's like just Mark. Web, well, because everything Mark Webb does goes through that lens. Right. Yeah. And so and so I think you're right. I think this is just another thing where it's like a more competent action or comedy director probably could have sold this scene to us. You're right. But I don't I think, think it, was, it I think it was sold to me. I think it could have been sold a lot better. Like I don't think it's a perfect scene, but I mm. I think that this is one of the better I think it's way better than what we saw in the Raimi trilogy of him learning his move set and understanding like who he wants to be because he is not Spider-Man yet. I yeah. I like that. I like him skateboarding, yeah. fine like the learning the parkour, realizing like he can jump up in different ways and like kind of like okay, cool. Spiders can do this shit. I am interested in this shit. How do I combine those into one thing? Mm-hmm. Him swinging on the chains and all that stuff. It's like there's a a much better sense of progression to what we end up getting with the amazing Spider-Man than we got before. And on top of that, I love the idea of Spider-Man on a skateboard. I always fucking have. In 1999, Neversoft made a game called Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. In 2000, Neversoft made a game called Spider-Man. Spider-Man. And then a week after that, Spider-Man, or sorry, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, which featured Spider-Man. It was fucking awesome. You got to skate as Spider-Man. It was awesome. And this movie gave me the closest thing to that in live action I've ever seen. Nick Scarpino, what's up? Before you well, ask Nick, he was under the age of 30. He was under okay, the age fair, of 30. Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> very, uh, very much. Dr. Connor yeah. shows Peter, that he heads over and Dr. Connor shows Peter the Ganali device, which is so out of place and clearly just going to come into play in the This is act. the MacGuffin machine created <laughs> by Dr. Charles MacGuffin. Yeah. And he says, and he says, here it lies gathering dust it's turned on and there's steam it's coming like out of it stadium. kurt like please let me kill the whole curtis city. curtis it's lighting up and beeping and there's dry ice coming out of it curtis <laughs> it's so Dude, ridiculous i i truly believe that in another world curtis never got the raimi trilogy we never had to get this it was just one series of movies that was made uh, where Disney owned all of the Marvel shit and didn't need to worry about any of this politics at all, right? Mm-hmm. And something like this was set up in movie one and didn't get acted on until the earliest, the end of movie two. But maybe, probably, movie three, where it's like, cool, we know there's this tech at Osborne Tower, right? And what does it do? We understand that these different things, just like we saw Kirk Connors in the Raimi movies, where it's like, oh, cool, the, the doctor's here. He doesn't have the arm. We know eventually it's going to happen, but we're world building. We're, we're taking our time. This is All so they rough. had to do was turn the, turn the machine off, just not have it on. 
yeah. and I would have bought it. I would have bought it three hundred percent more. Well, I don't, it's not. It's not that to me. It's the fact that he's like, he's like, what's that thing? And he goes, oh, that. <laughs> That's the Ganali device. We developed it uh, to allow us to disperse some sort of vaccine to a whole population. And he's like, but then. Lo and behold, someone was like, hey, maybe someone could use that as a fucking bioweapon if, if it's in the wrong hands. So we decided to put it behind this uh, supermarket glass back here that can easily be broken into. And he's like, I would have been like, wait, you're going to tell me you, you, you developed this missile to, to, to spread vaccines to people instead of being a fucking weapon of mass destruction? Come on, dude. Give me a break. It's completely it, ridiculous. It's like in Parks and Rec where Ron Swanson has a live, like, a live landmine on his desk. Yeah. And he's like, this is not this is not a souvenir landmine. This is a real landmine. And it's like, <laughs> my dude, you can't you can't leave the Ganali machine out on display. Put a fucking padlock on it or something, right? Like put it out there. Give me a little bit of chains or something. And actually uh, tomorrow we're gonna put it in the lobby for the tours that come by. <laughs> we yeah, love people to look at this thing. We're gonna put a button on it that says don't push like a sign that says don't push this button. If you yeah. flip it up. If you flip it up, it disperses the cloud of biotech. And if you flip it down, cotton candy for the visiting yeah. children. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, of course, Dr. Connors uh, shows Peter what he wants to do, which is grow back a limb using reptile uh, DNA, which they're going to do uh, first on Freddy the Rat. Or Freddy the oh, – yeah, the rat. Uh, Peter ignores a call from Aunt May as the computer runs a simulation of the regeneration process, and they finally uh, succeed. So they're like, let's try it out on Freddy, and we'll put him in the case for the weekend and see what happens. Uh, so last time we did this interview, I very much – remember uh a talking point that we had and watching it a couple nights ago i would have never noticed it myself but because we had that conversation i couldn't not think about it for the rest of this movie and it comes up no less than seven other times the amount of custom animations made for <laughs> visuals yeah. on these screens yeah. is so funny oh, like God. really this whole does the thing work with the rat or not could be just a red or a green and like, cool yes no we don't need to see the different rats dying but like but you know what number one there's an animator that had a lot of fun wow. doing that oh, yeah. oh, and yeah. number two it does you know yes it works no it doesn't like right now we like the way connor's is explaining it is it's it's binary they either they're either going to be cured or they're going to die and so having at least one of these animations is like or they going to turn into Monstra. You ever thought about turning into Monstra? <laughs> so you need at least one of them, I think. It's true. It's true. Uh, let's see. Peter heads home and finds Uncle Ben waiting for him, and he is not happy because Peter forgot about Aunt May. Uh, ben tells Peter that his father believed in responsibility. He goes, you got to do good things for people. You have a moral obligation to do so. And Peter's like, so what you're saying is, and he's like, if you've got the ability to do something, then you have to use that ability. And Peter's like, what I'm hearing from you <laughs> is, yeah. and he's like, if you can do a lot of cool things, you probably should. You should <laughs> think about that and internalize that and like yeah. use that the right way. And Peter's like, just fucking say with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. It's, can you just, can you just distill that down for me? It's been a just long a, day. Like a catchphrase. I got a if catchphrase. You, if you sweaty. could put it into one sentence. I I'm will coming say, down off my Molly trip right now, Uncle Ben. What's going on? <laughs> this argument is such a realistic family argument. And there's so much going on between the Parkers that we just didn't see in the Raimi films that sells, mm -hmm. that sells everything. It just of sells course. everything. Peter gets mad and says, how do you, like, how dare you, how dare you, you, all this stuff, yada, yada, yada. And then Peter bounces and smashes the glass behind him. And I'm like, does Peter have a problem with glass? Is this, is this going to be an ongoing thing in this movie? Is glass is kryptonite? Uh, Uncle Ben goes after him, but Peter hides up in a little uh, phone thing and then tries. They called him uh, Mr. Glass. Uh, Mr. Glass. <laughs> uh, he tries to buy some chocolate milk, but the guy at the front desk is just this complete dick. So Peter doesn't even hesitate when the guy behind him robs the cash register. And the, and the guy's like, hey, kid, a little help. And he goes, hey, not my policy. Uh, then the guy trips in front of Ben and the gun gets loose. A struggle ensues and Ben Raimi. takes one in the gut. Raimi do hit different. And I think I think the Raimi one, like we were saying, is a bit more memorable because of the melodrama. But this one could conceivably happen and this one could haunt you for the rest of your life. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of mixed on it all. Cause like I with a lot of things with the Raimi movies, and I think this is another example, I think that when we talk about them and we explain like what we feel from them it's very different than what they actually did and what they make us feel it's just like what we wanted to feel from it because it's like i think you're right that it is more emotional whatever but that's just because that's 
what those movies were building towards with that. Mm-hmm. I do think this drops the ball more in editing and like it feels like it's missing yep. a lot of scenes than anything yeah. else. And so it kind of does. It happens hit, so right? fast. And and even just dialogue choices, like correct me if I'm wrong, but he Peter has that line of like, not my policy. Mm-hmm. Does the store clerk he says say, store yeah, store policy, you have to spend ten dollars to take a penny. Yeah. Store policy. So when Peter says not my policy, it's not a direct, it's not as direct a callback. You know what I mean? There was that one, two in the Raimi one where it's like, hey, not my problem. And they can both say the same line to each other. Whereas this one, Peter has to kind of like go out of his way to remind like, hey, remember when you didn't give me a penny? Like, yeah, it's- yeah, yeah. No, no. I, so I get that. But like, and, and I, I totally could be wrong about this. I didn't pause. and I didn't go back. But does the store clerk say that's not store policy? He does. Yeah. I know the take a penny, yeah. leave a penny thing, but he uses the word policy. Yeah. He uses store policy. Okay, you have okay. to spend ten dollars to take a penny. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it, like, it does yeah, happen. It's, it's a bit of a stretch, just like the great power, great responsibility. Yeah. But okay, at least it had that. So. Okay. But also the buildup, and this is something that I find very interesting, and and this could be because of the proximity to the Raimi movies and the fact that everyone, including like my mom and my grandma, the, at, at this point in time was freshly familiar with the story of Spider-Man. It seems to build to the death of Uncle Ben way more than Uncle Ben dies. Does that make sense? Like, there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of back and forth in business with this cashier. And then, like, somebody trips, a gun comes out, Uncle Ben's dead, and I'm like, that was, like, half a second. And I understand it's supposed to be like, oh my gosh, it happened in a moment. But Mark Webb just doesn't know how to, like, sit with something. Maybe because I felt like I know more about the milk than Uncle Ben in this scene. To be fair, that looked like really good chocolate milk. It did look like good chocolate milk. I will say like this, we talked about this a little bit at the beginning, but this doesn't hit for me as the main crux of why Peter wants to become a hero. Mm -hmm. I don't, I think that in this world, this just feels like, oh, that, that was, that was a tragedy, but it wasn't something that Peter necessarily needs to take responsibility for. It was the final push. Well, it's like crammed down our throat that Peter feels really, really guilty for having let this guy go by. But in this one, it's like, it almost feels like Andrew Garfield has not really taken that much responsibility for it. And he was on his way to becoming a hero anyway. Yeah, I I, I kind of like that though. I don't don't dislike it. I'm just saying like, I, 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 I'm just so used to, you know, uh, uh, Bruce's parents dying in an alleyway being Bruce Wayne's fucking reason for wanting to be Batman, right? Yeah. Uncle Ben being shot as Spider-Man's re- like, that's what pushes him. And in this one, it's like, we don't really even have a scene where he feels he takes responsibility for this at all. It's a this. bunch like, of stuff, right? He takes it. There's a bunch of stuff going on. I think, I think he, he, he might as well have just said like, you know, it was my fault from now on. I shouldn't make mistakes anymore. As opposed to like, I could have stopped this or, mm-hmm. or yeah. like, it, it just more seems like, I fucked up. I shouldn't have left the house and I shouldn't have whatever given. And by the way, I don't know if I said this in the first time we reviewed this, but really cool for um, to have that cameo for Chad Kroger from Nickelback to be in this movie. Yeah. Uh, Cause he's saying the soundtrack in the first yeah, series and it's fun. great for him. It's, back. it's, it's like passing of the torch. He was passing mm-hmm. the torch. <laughs> so he goes on, a, he goes on a tirade to find this guy mm-hmm. who's all, who's a blonde guy. Am I crazy in thinking that every single actor was the same actor and that was all Chad Kroger? <laughs> it was every, that, was the, that was the many faces of Chad, like, the Chad same Kroger. Guy every time. If you've ever seen his one-man show that he does, there's a black box theater like uh, a mile from my house where Chad Kroger is always working on new material. No and way. He is, You're a liar. he is crushing it. He is crushing it. The character wow. work that you get out of Chad Kroger. Um, I'd love but to yeah, I, 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 I He do looks like say, a GTA creative character, this guy. I fucking he hate does. him. He does. hate the way he looks. The two uh, the two things here that are that are I think take away from it are number one, Sony's building a franchise and we can feel it. it. We can feel it in the background. It doesn't really get in our way until the next movie. But part of that is because of Science Dad, the the crystallizing the crucible of Uncle Ben is not the crucible because Science Dad would have gotten him to Spider Man anyway. And so it's kind of just it yeah. kind of. Yeah. makes it more natural, but it waters it down. But also See, it but, feels like... But what I like about it, though, is that as an origin story, and again, this is why this movie, for me, works, but also it doesn't work as well as it could have had the other things not existed, is the fact that they don't use the Uncle Ben thing as the one and only moment. I like that this movie, he searches for the killer, but that's not the next scene. That is kind right. of a bunch of scenes throughout it, and it really is Captain Stacy's death that 
throws him into this new world. And yeah. the moments that he has of him taking off the, that we're going to get to of him taking off the mask with the kid and all that, he becomes Spider-Man. Yeah, I don't want to give credit to his dad that inevitably he would have become Spider-Man no matter what this Andrew Garfield, Peter Parker becomes Spider-Man because he feels that need, not just because uncle Ben died. That's one part of why he did it. Right. And I think I like that. I think that's way more believable, way more relatable. And it just, it works more for these type of movies. Yeah. Peter, it takes a police drawing from uh, a cop who conveniently also tells him that the guy that killed his Uncle Ben has a star tattoo on his left hand. He's like, cool, thanks for that one. Uh, then the next day, I'm going to cool. beat up every motherfucker in this city without looking at their wrist first. Right. I could just <laughs> Get look at out of my first. way. Uh, the next day at school, Flash, this is that moment. Flash has a human moment with him where he's like, it feels good, doesn't it? Like, kind of fills that, that, that void of now, the pain we're in all your heart. Pro- and you're like, oh, fuck. We're this all pro this Flash moment? I think so. I am. Yeah. Okay. I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I think it, it speaks to sort of like why yeah. people bully because they were but, bullied. Or but again, Carboni, I know where you're going with this because it's sort of the same feelings that I, I I'm more pro, pro towards it because of the the performances. I think they're just mm-hmm. really, really damn good and it feels right. But this is the sort of performance that you get from two characters that have had a long past and not one that just punched somebody the other two, like two weeks ago. Like you knocked the fuck out of his face. Like I don't really see a guy punching somebody to then become this sort of sympathetic mm-hmm. towards you. You know, if you just call them Eugene, like it's just such a, it's yeah. a weird thing for me in, yeah. in, in real life. And this, and this is what a lot of these things that we're talking about, uh, about kind of come down to in real life, people are messy and complicated and they have a lot of reasons for things in a two hour movie about the spidered man. It just feels a little odd to me that flash makes this turnaround. I don't mind it. I just don't necessarily understand it. That's Fair all. Fair enough. Uh, Gwen tries to give him a hug, but nothing can console him except He's got more time vengeance. for Flash! I got vengeance. That's what he wants. So he heads to the nearest alleyway and beats the hell out of a blonde guy and then crawls up the wall. And it turns out the guy is, uh, whose ass he kicked doesn't have a tattoo. So he's like, cool, I'm not going to drop you off the side of this building. And he lifts him up and he just puts the guy, the guy's just hanging there. And I'm like... You don't know this guy has that upper body strength. You might kill this guy. They fucking hoist him up. But then, of course, he falls to the ceiling into an abandoned wrestling ring. And when he pops up, he sees this (laughs) massive poster of a luchador and realizes, oh, because the guy's like, like, I know who you are, man. I can see your face. He's like, Christopher Nolan. I'm so sorry. Uh, So he sees a giant red mask and goes, I should probably put a mask on if I'm going to gallivant around the city. But I will say this, Tim. I do like this. This goes back to what you said. He knows what he wants to do before he knows he's Spider-Man. And I do like that in this movie. He does a lot of Spider-Man shit before he decides he's Spider-Man. But he looks at the luchador mask and then is like, let me get a fucking red balaclava and just Mm -hmm. uh, wear glasses. Like yeah. what you were drawing doesn't look like what you wore. (laughs) I'm a spider. I I just, (laughs) but at least... I thought yeah. he might just go for like an actual luchador mask and make it like black with the sort of like thing with the white out. I forget exactly how it looked in the thing, but like... What the mask looked like and what you yeah. were sketching in class does not look like what you just wore. Well, you put glass, you put Oakley's <laughs> over a red bottle. That's the funny thing about, like, the Raimi verse is like, well, the spider was red and blue, so I'm red and blue. Mm-hmm. In this, like, he puts on this balaclava and nobody looks at that and goes, oh, yeah, spider. <laughs> yeah. Like those red and blue spiders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, let's see. Uh, what? What? Peter uh, starts sets about making his own costume, and he orders or and or steals some Oscorp bio cable pellets uh, and makes his own little web shooters, which shoot all over his face. And he's like, um, "I like this. I, need, I like you, this." You didn't need to do that. We talked well, so about he did it. though, because like had to. it's so it, like, graphic. It's it's weird where like it is one of those moments where I, I enjoy it overall plot wise, but the way that it's shot, like, why is it framey? It in animates. In like, yeah. It animates in this way that's just like, it's just like, eh. it's like, and they're like, ooh, I got compositing all over it. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> gross. That was my work composition. <laughs> um, I do, we talked about this, and I'm a fan of, I'm a fan of organic web shooters for the Raimi verse, and I, I wouldn't have minded them here, uh, but this is a good way. The box that says Oscorp, like chemicals stolen from, and then like the mechanical shit that we already know Peter can do mm-hmm. working together. I go, yeah, this kid built web shooters. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, and again, I like it for one reason, one reason only. I mean, obviously, they, they kind of did this a little bit in Spider Man 2, but I like that, they, that they're mechanical and they can be taken out of play at any given time. 
Yes. Because it gives him another obstacle to overcome as a superhero, which I think is important, right? Batman which in this movie, movie, though, they use in the worst way possible. Well, only yeah, once, yeah. Not use well, but I was like, you know, in the cartoons, he was always like, oh, no, when he needed to, he was like, I'm out of web juice or whatever yeah. the heck it was. And you're like, that's it's it gives him a little something to another. You got to drink milk. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Put a pocket it's in the good. fucking suit, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's it doesn't see, now need it's... to be skin tight lycra. You could, <laughs> you could wear a belt with pouches and bring <laughs> two web fluids with you. Right, you have a whole you tank schmuck. of it on your back. Velcro one to your head. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, now it's time to test it all out. Peter goes to the highest building he possibly can and then decides to do a handstand on the ledge of the very tall building and then dives off uh, and slings his web to safety, landing on a chair of a Starbucks down below. This uh, is a good, hears, that's a good shot. I love that shot so much. I think it's fun. I think a lot of the stuff with the swing around is has a different energy than Sam Raimi. And I'm not, I'm not he's mad so at bad it. at it. He's so bad at it in the beginning. And then when he gets good at it, he's good at it in, in such a much more naturalistic way. Like all those little run along the run along the walls and kickoffs and like mm -hmm. strange, awkward grabs that a human would have. They learned. They learned how to do that shit. Tony Hawk's pro skater. That's yeah. where they learned. Japan uh, airs, baby. That's hey. When it's not CG, that's Bob Bernquist. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Yo, wow. I mean, honest, honestly, that, that that is a big thing that we haven't talked about yet is the Bob CG. Bernquist. Which is <laughs> <and> Bob Bernquist. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, like, it's not bad. I don't think there's a moment in this movie the CG is, like, horrible bad that, like, in some examples that we've seen. It's also never, like, perfect, though. Like, it's always more than good enough. But seeing him swing through, like, there's always some level of where I'm watch. I might as well be watching a cartoon here. And, like, that just kind of sucks. And that's true of the MCU as well for a lot of things. Like, I'm not trying to say the MCU is uh, above reproach with this. But, like, there is some level of that's not Andrew Garfield. Yeah. I've seen Andrew Garfield, and that's not him. He's got a big ass head, though. I think yeah. they did a pretty good job of replicating him. He's got that little hair, lean dude. body with a big so ass head. So much hair in the, yeah. the mask. I think it has to do Kim Barrett, like who is the costume designer on this. She was also the costume designer for all the Matrix movies. Um, a lot of like a lot of stuff. She's done things. Um, she went real shiny Very with shiny. Peter, which which is cool when he's when he's in the physical suit, but. There's something, even if we don't understand, even if people don't pay a lot of attention to special effects, you know that when something is too shiny, it's CG. And so when the real guy is wearing a really shiny suit and he's swinging and the CG is shiny, you're like, no. See, and I, th I think they I'll, were hoping that it was going to work the other way, but it I'll, didn't. I'll disagree. And I think here's, here's what their base was for that. They watched Iron Man and they were like, Shiny metal looks really cool and is very easy to sell. So mm -hmm. let's put some highlights on this suit. And when the highlights pop at night, I think it'll it'll blend in and it'll disappear. I think everyone's haunted by that image of Peter crawling up the wall in the balaclava in Spider-Man 1, where yeah. it's like, we don't know how to do cloth or hair right now in CG. And until we figure that out, let's stay. But that didn't work. And I think... I think that was again everything in this movie is a direct uh, you know equal opposite pendulum pendulum swing for the Sam Raimi movies. They're like, let's go slick with this and have a lot of highlights so it sells the effect. Every every time we bring up the fact that literally all of Phase One was out, that it's blows wild. my that blows my it's wild mind. To think like when you think they tried of, to make one Spider Man movie yeah. in the time that they released all of Phase One and the world <laughs> just left them behind and like three Batmans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he, uh, Peter, here's a description of the dude who killed Uncle Ben. Come over the police scanner, but when he gets there, it's not the dude after all. Over the precinct, we get introduced to Captain Stacy, one of his cronies, and the guy's like, there's a new vigilante in town, uh, which people are starting to see for themselves because Spider Man drops off the guy at the precinct and people start taking video of him. And he's like, we got to get this guy. Uh, after a few more searches on Bing, Peter finally makes his costume complete with gold reflective lenses. And uh, I dig them. It's a weird. I like them. But I dig them. It reminds me of the ja of like the seventies Japanese series. Like it was like a weird pull, but it was like a fun way I think to uh, differentiate it from the yeah. other suit. It's not and even it just. I don't even think it's the yellow that necessarily bothers me. I think it's the shape of them. Yeah, they're small. I, I think the shape guy. of them still looks very much like he took goggles and kind of just fashion themselves which like it would make sense in the story yeah. but it doesn't look like spider-man like anytime they zoom in on his face just from like the neck up it doesn't look like spider-man i feel like i'm in a weird uncanny valley of like 
you, this looks like some ripoff thing that I'm watching right now. And then if, in part two, they just decided to just say, Andy, let's do it. We're going to pop off. Right yeah, this is a good Spider Man. Off. Let's go. <laughs> this is uh, a, yeah, like this is a Spider Verse character or like somebody yeah. like Spider Sona or something like, I'm the yeah. Spider Man of Earth 8029. It's like, thousand cool. percent. Uh, let's see. Uh, I lost my. He catches up with another suspect, and this is the the scene in the car where he's like, oof, like messing with him, the knife scene, and all that stuff. And so then he webs the wall. No. Then he has a moment where he webs his mouth, and he's like, "Am I going to murder this man?" Uh, but the guy's not the guy with the tattoo, so he goes, "Ha, ah, you're you're saved." And then it cuts like his mouth open, and then this uh, is the pokes most holes in his nose. <laughs> yeah, this is the most Spider Man we have seen in four movies in this two minute sequence. Every uh, bit of, he does. Every I made bit a note he does. Here to ask Tim, how do we like the quips here? Excuse you? Okay, okay, okay. 10 out of 10! This I scene, a dude. Note to ask. A plus Thank plus you. quip I, seller yeah, would quip no, again. This, this entire scene, a lot of it was in the trailer for this movie. And I will never forget seeing it for the first time and just being like, oh my God, finally, finally, we're seeing Spider Man in live action. Not just like a Spider Man in an idea of what Spider Man might be, but like fucking sp what I love about Spider Man on the big screen. And watching this movie in theaters for the first time, seeing this scene play out from the beginning of it to what Andy was talking about with the, yeah, rolled on the windows, what Carboni's talking about, oh, knives. Like, that entire fucking scene plays for me so hard. I love it. We just got 5,000 minutes, because this movie does feel long, I will admit. But 5,000 minutes of Andrew Garfield as an amazing P Peter Parker with amazing chemistry with everyone he talks to. And now he's in the suit, and they ratchet it up to perfection yeah my literal note from this scene is andrew garfield was born was born for this he yes. was literally born for it everything he does in this like you're saying even when the cops show up and he's just like dude i just did 80 percent of your job like that's such a spider-man thing oh, to good say. and we never got any of that no uh peter comes home late and forgot the eggs. Aunt May sees the bruises and wants to know what's going on. He's like, don't worry about it. It's totally fine. She tells him secrets have a cost. They're she not knows. free. Not now. Not ever. She and always like, knows. Well, of course. Sally Field knows, too. She can secrets see don't the make fucking friends, depths of your soul. Connors, uh, the next day, shows uh, Rafa the progress they've made with Freddy the Rat. And Rafa wants them to immediately start human trials. And Connors is like, "That's we can't do that. There's a whole FDA approval process we have to get through this one. <laughs> now, in this naturalist movie where they're trying to make things just a little more realistic... <laughs> Captain Black Suit comes in and goes, why don't we just inject elderly veterans with yeah. it without telling them? My guy, take it down to a take second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you that. and if you don't do that, by the way, like I know where you live and I know where you sleep and your family will be dead. Like, just go the extra mile. Just say yeah. that you have a grenade on you right now and you'll fucking pull the pin if he doesn't do it. Like, it's he's so cartoony, man. It sucks. It's it's it, yeah, and it it's 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 unfortunate um, because in this real world, you're like, let's follow this through. You're going to go to a, a veterans hospital and all of them are going to die. And, and you're doing this because you're, you're like, you're willing to put all this on the line for your boss who we've never even met. It's just kind of a weird, yeah. very, very villain. One point, one dimensional villain. Anything complicated do. though, because we haven't met him, but we all know him. And the right. movie yeah. makers know we know him. Right. And like that, that's again, this movie's caught in a bad place. And I'm not excusing it because it's still a mistake. Like it's right. bad. You shouldn't have done this. But like they set up Norman Osborne earlier as they're going up the escalator into Oscorp for the first time. And like we understand who this is, and we just watch these fucking movies, so we know. But like it's it's weird that this guy acts the way he does, so purely evil and weird yeah. for Osborne that we have no sense that Osborne could even possibly be a good person we don't want him we know he's sick we don't want him to live yeah right? and, it, and it's also just there are so many other if you're going for more naturalistic and character based and this is why i think reese has got like the shortest end of this of everything in this film all you have to say is like well dude if you're not ready to go to human uh, to human trials maybe i'm just going to pull all this funding and end this 30-year phase of your life right and you'll go home with this injury that you don't like and Norman Osborn will die and you won't have a job anymore because you worked for 15 years and you couldn't get it ready. Are you telling me that's not scary enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that like that's but the level of a reason to go kill Ratha. And that's that's kind of where the, the writing in this kind of falls apart. But if, if it still gives him a reason to inject himself. Yeah. And yeah. then the lizard can be angry at Ratha. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean?
Yeah, that's the level of conniving corporate dude that I would rather see as opposed to this guy who just is a complete caricature. Uh, and then of course he kind of reminds him like he's like what out he's like don't don't let what happened to Richard happen to you and he's like why the what the fuck happened to Richard <laughs> he's like what's going on here um, <laughs> this sounds like this dude did a lot of like, shit and just yeah. didn't get an arm I, I'm <laughs> like, like I gotta go for fuck's sake <laughs> uh, Gwen grabs Peter the next day and invites him to eat some branzioni at her house the next day apartment 2016 uh, over in the back in the lab Connor wrestles with the truth time to get a new arm he tries out the formula on himself and it goes about as well as you could expect. Uh, he passes out. Uh, Peter enters through the fire escape uh, of Gwen's house. And let me tell you guys, <laughs> Andy, you got to tell me right now, you and I have a will they, won't they kind of thing. We've been kind of had that. We had this sexual tension building throughout the years of our relationship at school and whatnot. Yeah. And you invite me over to your house and I, sh- and I come through the window. You're not immediately uh, making out with me. Give me a break. How no, hot I'd, is this? I'd be like, like, it's kind of warm in New York, right? And you, you, 20 stories, 20 floors yeah. that you came up? Like, and, like and I, here's the line I wanted. Here's the line that's I what wanted. She says, though. Here's the, no, but the line that I wanted, um, and it's just such an easy line. I don't know why they didn't do it. I was like, uh, wait, why'd you come up? That's 20 floors. Like, no, no, no. Why'd you come up the, uh, the whatever the fuck they call him? Well, cause the, the guy downstairs, right. he was pretty intimidating. Well, that's 20 stories, though. Yeah, he was really intimidating. Like yeah. I needed, yeah. like <laughs> I needed that little thing right there, and yeah. they didn't do it. I, I was yeah, just like a Peter thing. Parker style. Like, have you seen him? Like, yeah, you know, like one yeah. of those things. I was really uh, intimidated. I I do love this. I do understand Nick what you're saying, but I think one thing that we also have to keep in mind is she. The one comic booky thing about her is that her dad is the captain of the police, and That's you don't true. sneak. You don't sneak into the police captain's daughter's fucking window. Right. And immediately make out. Although that is why she's kind of into you, because you're man. sneaking through the window. Exactly, uh, bro, bro. But Dennis Leary, great. Dennis Leary walks into this, and this is not the first time we've seen him in this film. Not but the look last. he has on his face, this kill this kid. you motherfucker. Yeah. How did you get in here past me? How dare you? How dare because you circumvent you can... me from uh-huh. this situation? Uh-huh. It's my eldest daughter I here, bro. Love it. Love it. Yeah, he's he's very, very good. What I wanted him to say when he entered was to look at the camera and go, I would have preferred to play a firefighter instead of a policeman. Because mm-hmm. he just he loves doing firefighter shit. He, loves, he, this, loves, he oh, fucking God. loves firefighters. That is hilarious. Rescue, 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 rescue me from this movie, am I right? <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> from this role, I'm about to die. Uh back over in the lab, Connors grows a new arm, and then he has to pick at it. Mm. Ew. I like this it. scene. I like you, it. I like his oh. weird baby arm. I like that he's pulling off group goop from his weird baby arm. Listen. I hate I hate that when he closes, there's an excess of skin in the palm. Yeah. Because yeah, it's all right. rubbery. Like it's yeah. just a rubber pro like fucking whatever they have on there. But um it sells the effect of like this is membraney and you can see through the finger a lot. You know, it's it's so Listen, gross. I, it's, I I I know this is a movie, but the fact that his arm grows this fast. <laughs> I'm just like, that's so comic booky movie. And I know that that's what this is, but I'm like, you couldn't give it a couple days where he like looks at it starting to grow. It like grows a full arm in like 20 minutes. <laughs> this He's going like to have to eat night. so much frozen mac and cheese. Oh, so much mac and cheese <laughs> going into the creation. Uh, of this I, arm. I love that. I love that. By the way, Dr. Black suit was just like, I'm halfway to murdering these old gonna, people. Uh, I'm gonna like I them. like that wasn't a threat or anything. No, he, I, I thought just... it was a joke. But he's like, uh, he's like, hey Alfred, who's the name of his driver? Hilarious. Take me to the veterans hospital. It's time to kill all these people. And Alfred's like, <laughs> right on, sir. And then he calls Bernard. And he's like, dude, is this what's your life like? Because my life's a little weird right now. Bernard's like, dude, you have no fucking idea what my life's like, bro. <laughs> no, I, uh, joking with that. Like, I I do like the scene. I like what Andy's and Carboni are saying. Like, I like the visuals of it. I think it's really cool. I like how hard they went. Like, cause it's believable. Uh, but to Nick's point, it is a little fast and all that. I do think this scene isn't quite, it doesn't hit the magic that I think they were trying to go for that we mm-hmm. did get in Spider-Man three with Sandman. Like that Sandman creation scene that every criticism we just threw here, we can throw out that easily, but like there's something about that that worked a little better for me than this. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just more of a tone thing where this was realistic, but it wasn't re- because it wasn't fully realistic. I was like, I don't know about this. Whereas the Sam right. thing was so over the top ridiculous that it's kind mm-hmm. of like artistic charm mm-hmm. sh- sh- like shown really nicely. 
But if I, but if I may, it, it has something to do with the simplified melodrama of Raimi as well, where we understand everything we need to know about Flint Marco by the time he turns into Sandman. He's clutching the locket. He wants to be a good father. He feels like he's just had a run of bad luck. If he can just prove things to people one time, be okay. And so he's not ready to fucking turn into sand yet. He has something to do. I don't understand what Kurt Connors wants in this movie for he wants until, an arm. until he wants literally him. he wants an arm. But other than that, like, I don't it's, like, it's, it's a I disservice to the him. character for sure. Yes. Right. Because, because he, this character is complicated. He's hyper smart. And you would want to believe that if he was a real life person, he would not put anyone's life in jeopardy to regrow a limb, even though that is, of course, you know, something that he would desperately want. You would like to think that as a scientist, as a person who's like setting out to do good, he would not do bad to do good. Um, and if he's shitty, some, yeah. And he's lying about himself that he's doing it for good. We would have had more clues. We about needed that. to have that. Yeah. But Other than like Dr. Really Ratha good, yeah. being like, remember 15 years ago, you let something bad happen. And we're like, what, what, what? did he let happen? happen? Let's go. Is there a subway you train don't, involved? What you are the glasses? don't have the glasses a franchise. Do what this is... is not a cinematic universe yet. Who is the last night? Who is the last night? Is it, is it in Transformers? We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Connors calls Emma, Doctor or, or Rotha's assistant, and says, "Don't let him go to the veterans' hospital to kill those people." And Emma's like, "What?" <laughs> and he's like, "Don't." He's like, "I'm becoming a lizard." And then he, uh, he gets in a cab, but he's becoming a lizard. Uh, can, you just, can you hold for a second? I'm becoming a lizard. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> He gets in a cab, and he's clearly a lizard. The cab driver's like, this is not the weirdest shit I've seen today. I'm a cab driver in New York. Uh, over at dinner, they talk about that spider guy who Captain Stacy accuses of assaulting people and being dangerous. And he says, if I wanted, he's like, yeah, but he caught that car thief. You know, the car thief. And, and Captain Stacy fucking lays it down. He's like, man, you're playing checkers. I'm playing chess. If I wanted the car thief off the street, he'd be off the street. The car thief is going to lead us to the whole ring. Spider-Man ruined a six-month uh, sting operation. And then he goes, well, maybe he's trying to do something the police can. He goes, what do you think we do all day? Sit around eating donuts? I love this. this is I love such this a good so scene. much because in every freaking comic book movie, always the police are just these inept human beings. And Captain Stacy's like, I'm, we're doing a good job of this. Like, you don't understand because you're a fucking kid who's got this power now. Um, I, I like the back and forth of the scene because Peter's but like also, wrong, right? Peter's out there assaulting people. He's not Peter doing Peter Parker said a cab and we're fine with it, everybody. We like that for Peter Parker. What do you I thank you very much. A, a cab, all cops are bastards. Oh, did he say that? No, no. But, but just, like, he's just pretty well, much like the, the uh, subtext scene, Nicholas. Yeah, oh, I was like, Jesus, subtext. I think I would have caught that. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. But I, I, I do want to point out also that I, I, I love the back and forth and the. I just would have died of like awkwardness, Tim. If I were in, if I were sitting at that table. I would have left the second I felt any sort of tension because it's just how can you you know when you go to your friend's house and your parents like yell at or their parents are yelling at their at your friend you're like oh I hate fucking being here yeah, <laughs> yeah this yeah. is the feeling I felt the whole time but again this is why I love this so much like I love Spider Man at its best when Peter and Spider Man are dealing with villains or friends in different ways simultaneously and I love it when there is that kind of mix between the two and this is Peter being Spider Man. Like can I Spider-Man say something? is affecting Peter in a way where he's standing up for himself and he's not standing up even though it's awkward. He's not leaving this place. It's like he's kind of fucking dealing with this. I love it. Carboni, yeah. go for it. It's just um, it's just Thanksgiving at Peter's house. You know what I mean? Like because it, we were not, we were just a few years removed from the goblin sticking his fingers into the cranberry sauce. <laughs> this scene probably doesn't get as much as it should. But I do, I do, to what, to what y'all are saying, I love that we cut to reaction scenes of the two brothers giggling and being uncomfortable a little bit because they're not allowed to talk to dad that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that we like, get- Stick it to him, Peter. This he, guy's way too much about it. Yeah, he does this at dinner all the time. You know what yeah, I mean? You get that yeah. feeling that he pontificates a lot. And even Gwen is kind of like, mm, you shouldn't be doing this because you should be making a good impression, but also- I would like you to slam me up against the wall. Yeah, Gwen's mm. also like this. I just mental note: make sure the window's unlocked. Yeah. <laughs> the window's unlocked. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
they have that whole back and forth and he goes, what do you think? What do you do? He's like, I think he stands for something, the same thing you stand for protecting innocent people. And, and then he's like, well, get out of here. Uh, I gotta go. They head up to the roof uh, to get some air and Peter wants to tell Gwen something. And he's like, I've been bitten. She goes, so have I. And I'm like, fuck. Mm. And then Peter tells her, he's like, I gotta tell you about myself. I, it's tough. And she walks away. She's like, I, listen, I don't know. She walks away. And instead of telling her that he's Spider-Man, he just webs her. And brings her back over to her, and she totally gets it. She yo, the, like, every once in the a while, look, the, the fuck look on her face. It's so holy, there. she wants to unhinge her jaw and devour him. Okay, that's where we went with that. I thought I was going to go. No, somewhere look, else here's the thing: very innocent. Every once in a while, there are movie scenes we see. We're like, oh my god, that's right out of the comics. Like that is exactly the scene they showed that perfectly. Whether it's Watchmen, whether it's like Spider-Man moments we see in Homecoming, we see, see in some other movies. In Spider-Man 2, him walking away with the Spider-Man no more, all that stuff. This feels straight out of the comics, but it wasn't. And that is such a compliment to this movie and the filmmaking of it. They created a Spider-Man moment. Him thwipping her, her spinning around, the, all the dialogue. This is authentically Spider-Man. Congratulations. Yeah. Genuinely, if you can freeze frame on her face. In Overwhelmed. That moment, like, this is just, incredible. I'm scared. I love this. Yeah, I love this. You're terrible. My father hates you. Like, like everything is happening, and she's just like, Aah. yeah. Uh, let's Meanwhile, see. Kirsten um, Dunst. <laughs> yeah, Kirsten Dunst, just get through it. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah she's got nothing. They give she her. Can't even to work scream with. again. <laughs> she screamed uh, they, once. They end up. You have it out. on tape. It's true. <laughs> Guys, how many times do I have to scream? Would three be enough for? Three movies. For three movies. <laughs> For three. I'll yeah, give you three uh, screams. Just use Kirsten, them over I think and over three again. Three is probably enough. We'll just we'll just we'll put them together. Put a little effect in the middle of them. No one. Uh, uh, they had uh, they start making out a little bit, and of course, mom interrupts and she's like, "Your dad wants you downstairs right now." And she's like, "Right now." And then Peter hears some sirens. Well timed in the background. Time to go to work. He says goodbye and then jumps off the side of the building as Gwen whispers to herself, "Oh." I am in trouble. <laughs> it is the fucking perfect, perfect sentiment for that whole scene to end that whole scene. So uh, and we go to a scene that's not so good. Roth's car gets hit from the back and he sends his valet, Alfred, to go check it out. And then Peter swings in and spots the lizard, just throwing cars out of the way. Uh, so he suits up and swings into action, action as the car. You could name the over. butler anything. It's true. And he webs all the cars as they're going and hangs them off the side. Uh, and then the lizard, of course, escapes. But see, uh, as he's going after him, see Thomas Howell yells back. He's like, my kid's trapped in one of those cars downstairs. And Spider-Man's like, wait, sir, you, you aren't by chance a crane operator, are you? Because that might come in very handy later. I'll save your child. Are you from Crane Operators Local 323? And he's like, I am. How do you know? Are you are you Job Joe? Yeah, I know Joe. Um, so he heads down to help this kid out. This kid, Jack, I think is the kid's name. Mm -hmm. uh, he's trapped in the car. And Peter's like, he freaks out when he sees a human spider guy come to the car. So Peter does a good human thing here. He takes off his mask. He's like, look, I'm just a guy, just like you. Here, hold this. It'll give you strength. And the kid's like, he was like it'll make you strong. And the kid's like, oh, that's nice. And then, of course, the car catches on fire. And the kid's like, what the fuck are you going to do now, spider guy? And Spider-Man's like, I'm going to hold on to the bumper while you climb out of this car. And the kid's like, I am a child. I don't know how to do any of this. So he says, put on the spider mask. It'll make you strong. And he's like, okay, cool. And the kid puts it on. And he goes, but I need you to climb a little faster here, Jack. And as Jack climbs up to the top, the bumper gives. And Peter uh, webs him and pulls him out of the car. And we get one of those moments like Bane, right, where the kid just stays and the car falls behind down below him. And it's like, I've saved your child, C. Thomas Howell. You now owe me one. And C. Thomas Howell's like, if you ever need a series of cranes lined up at a perfect 90-degree angle to light your way, you let me know. I'm local 309. Yeah. I will. Um, I will, C. Thomas Howell. I do, I do like the the climb a little. You got to climb a little faster here, buddy. Like that's a very yeah. Spider Man yeah. thing. Uh, the Thomas. whole thing was good. I yeah. also, just, I also like that we don't, uh, we don't fully see the lizard here. The lizard is still a little bit of a mystery to us, which I think is cool. And I wrote this down, but I don't remember this. At one part, see Thomas Howell asks, "Who are you?" And he goes, "I'm Spider Man." Is that what he says? Yep. Yeah, he says, "I'm Spider Man." Okay, cool. He I'm decides, decides on the name. I love this. Here we are, three movies in. This is now the fourth movie, and in at least two of them, we got the New Yorker scenes, like kind of like, how is New York going to help them? Like, how is Spider-Man going to help New York? I love the Peter Parker, Spider-Man, New York dynamic. Add the cops to it. I think that's a very interesting layer, and this movie deals with all of them very well, and this scene is, I think, a great setup to the crane scene we get later that, like, I understand the problems that it has, and, like, they are weird and it is a movie but i think that this is as good of a setup that you could possibly have 
to make the crane thing not a total joke. At least there is a setup, right? Like we've we've never seen this sort of uh, reciprocal relationship before. It's always like random New Yorkers who just like Spider Man. At least like I see what he was going for with trying to make them connected in some way. See Thomas Howell saves him by swinging a fucking steel girder over to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get fucked. You're all dead falling. inside. That scene's great. It's great. Uh, he's falling, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Because so he ridiculous. misjudged it. He had the web and he misjudged it. <laughs> We're going to get there. Uh, Connors turns back into a man down in the sewers and takes a healthy dose of what I would imagine are antibiotics <laughs> to help with all the sewer water. He just swallowed. Yo, <laughs> so many people are submerged in the sewers. It's gross. I have so you know many problems with this. It's poop water, right? It's not just normal runoff water. There's some <laughs> no. poop in there. Yeah, There's apparently, a lot of not poop. according to Mark Webb, it's fucking crystal geyser. It's arrowhead in a bottle. It's, just it's like dew down there. It's just crystal clear in that sewer. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> Oh, God. No, I don't know. Why. Some reptile, some lizards to reptile Nirvana. <laughs> hey, Nick, Nick's transition earlier just really made me think of, and we cut to Peter Parker and Uncle Ben in heaven. <laughs> 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 oh man, listen, this movie's good, but it's not. It's not immune to a lot of ridiculous shit that we're about. What to are get our through. theories? Absolutely. On these random lizardy reptiles, are they? Oh, because I'll tell you, where, Carboni, you don't the, live in a huge city. You, you live in an urban sprawl, so I apologize to you because you don't understand what it's like living in a major metropolitan city. It's not your fault. No, never have, haven't. never will. I'm you a country have, boy through and you, through. You're a country bumpkin coming in straight from yeah. fucking Idaho, right, or whatever the country is. I literally, as if a, I'd been able to hold on to the turnip truck, Nicholas, uh, I wouldn't even be here right now. Still be out uh, there. As a person hey, who's lived on, in San Francisco, on. born in Idaho raised. or whatever the country is, we're just gonna let yeah, that that's what he said. Yeah, <laughs> what he said. The, the, yeah, the country of Idaho where they make yeah. turnips. Move on, Kevin. Kevin, it made sense. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, as a person who was born and raised, I went to Lowell High School, born and raised in San Francisco. This place You're such is, a bitch, Nick. This place is <laughs> over fucking run with lizards. I can't stop seeing lizards everywhere. There's lizards on my wall. There's sometimes I've seen sometimes one lizard in San Francisco I, my entire life. If I one. feel lost and hungry and I don't know where I'm going, a, a group of lizards will lead me in the right direction. Well, I thought you were going to say you just grab a lizard, eat it. Yeah, you <laughs> just yeah, everywhere. you just pluck a lizard. High in pluck protein. The yeah, the fact that there's this, rats, I would be like, that makes sense. New York's over run with rats, but lizards, I'm like, wouldn't the rats eat the lizards? I digress. I don't know. There's a lot going on. I it's don't weird. understand the lizards. <laughs> it's weird. I don't get because they're like, this is our big lizard. It's our it's our king lizards. We all have. I can explain it. the rest of them away, but I can't the rest of the stuff in the movie away. But I just don't understand where the lizards are coming from. I'll tell you what though. Here's the thing: small lizards, I get it. But at yeah. one point, there's just a team of iguanas that look like they were brought in from New Mexico, and you're like, where the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. New York sewers have iguanas. That's yeah, and weird. they were sent to fuck up his game of snood. Yeah, it was weird. But do you I think, this, do I you think maybe song. they were all drawn to him? Maybe they all from Definitely. across yeah, 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 from yeah, across yeah. the world, they all were like, here's across King the Lizard. Yeah, across yeah, the world. Maybe. Like a rat king. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Lizard King. Yeah. Okay. I can do anything. Uh, the next day, Captain Stacy issues an arrest warrant for Ma the masked vigilante known as Spider Man. You had a real job, Captain Stacy. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> Uh, Peter uh, Peter shows Gwen his spider at the football practice, and she thinks it's beautiful. Also, she's the only one who knows. Uh, which he, uh, he's like, she's like, who else knows about this? And he's like, just you. And she's like, Fuck. she's like, are you serious? Oh, that's, so odd. that's so odd. Uh, secrets are hot. Gwen tells him uh, he's got to lay. He's, she's like, you got to lay low, Peter. Uh, but he knows there's only one way he can stop the lizard. He's the only person that can stop the lizard. Also, he really likes kissing Gwen, so that uh, they do that some more until someone throws a football at him, and then he catches it and th fucking flings the thing, and <laughs> thing into the stratosphere, and it snaps the gold. I wonder <laughs> who Spider Man is. <laughs> also. Uh, I just want to say I love the realism of this dialogue where she is genuinely worried and she's saying, please don't do this thing that you want to do. Right. And he does the diffusion like cute boyfriend thing of like, I really like kissing you. You're really cute. And oh she's like, God. you know what I mean? Uh, like, me you don't guys. go out and do this. You're real pretty. You know what I mean? Like he's he's. Yeah. He's it's trying adorable. to play it off. Yeah. Do you know how adorable. many times I've tried to pull that shit in my relationship? My wife's like, no, bro, you got to go do the dishes. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Uh, Peter heads to Connor's office to figure out how a predator would hunt a reptile, and uh, Connor gets super creepy. He's like, nobody can hunt a reptile. They're the apex predators in their environment. I'm like, I don't think they are. I don't think I they are. Iguanas are the number one predator in the world. <laughs> I think a big cat could kill an iguana. <laughs> you think so. You think so. But what if you give the iguana a, a tiny knife to put in its teeth? Oh. Like a pirate. Well, now we're talking about You know, uh, iguana's now, teeth in, are all made of just sharp metal objects. Now, in this scene, I got the feeling that Connor's really understood what peter was asking you know what i mean yeah. and, and like, he was like are you fucking with me are you trying to kill me 
and he's but like, it's yeah, exactly. but it's weird because then it also takes the camera later. I I don't know. I I don't understand how much Connors knows at this point. He doesn't know anything, but it's weird. This is a weird yeah. scene. But as Peter leaves, Connors is like, "I got you. Got to get the hell out of here. I'm working on some shit." And Peter leaves. He looks over. Oh, if you give a mouse sees, a cookie, he sees Freddy um eating the other. He's just mutant Freddy eating the other rat, and he doesn't think to kill it. And maybe I'm just throwing this out there in New York. Maybe that's why your rats are so bad because you let or, these fucking mutant rat lizards just run around all willy nilly, and you don't stomp them out while you have the chance. Listen, you had a weird convo, but you could. Hey, Curtis. Yeah. Hey, Curtis, did you see what happened with Freddy? There's a monster over Kurt, here. Kurt, come over here. This thing. You see this? Maybe we Curtis? should use the serum. Are you worried? This I'm thing. Worried. This thing is two feet tall, <laughs> and it's. Worried? It's terrifying. So there's yeah. blood everywhere. <laughs> like I'm Spider Man. I don't want to fucking go into this thing. This yeah. thing is terrifying. Uh, Peter heads to Captain Stacy to tell him that Connors is a giant lizard, and, and Captain Stacy tells him to go back to Tokyo and kicks him out. But since he's not a completely one dimensional character, uh, he asks one of his tech nerds to dig up all the info they have on Doctor Kurt Connors. Am I uh, the only one that noticed that Dennis Leary's suit didn't fit in this scene? His cuffs were like halfway down his hand. God oh, damn that. it. Carboni, you've it was been with wicked. us long enough on this to become Nick Scarpino. Congratulations. Yeah. No, it's I finally just, happened here. You no. noticed something no one else did, but it's now going to become the next hour and a half of this he's show. Just, he's, <laughs> handing, he's handing somebody the flyer, and then he goes down, and it looks, like, it looks like they had to give him his blazer at a nice restaurant so he could go inside. Andy, I was I, really weird. I'll I don't know. Song. Ready? Cuffs, 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 cuffs. Were they know. too short? Cuffs, 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 cuffs. <laughs> Nailed it. It doesn't have to be a whole thing. I just thought it was weird that they didn't fit his wardrobe to him for this. No, scene. I just That's love awful. that finally someone's as weird as I am on one of these podcasts. Because these guys swear that they don't see wigs. And I'm like, I it's fucking a, see wigs everywhere. It's a fucking $200 million movie. Have the suit tailored. Have a suit I, tailored. I really, 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 really love this scene. Because this is an example of what I keep talking about. Where we have Peter, Captain Stacy, Spider-Man, Lizard. The dynamics between all of them are so interesting. Peter gave Lizard the equation. To make him or gave Kirk mm -hmm. Connors the equation to become the lizard, right? He is now Peter going to Captain Stacy to stop this at, on a human level. But then Spider Man is fighting the lizard. He knows it's going to happen. He knows he has a rematch coming. Like that is so good. Yeah, yeah, that's that's some that's some real Spider Man ass Spider Man mm -hmm. right there. Uh, Peter spots a reward for proof of the lizard on the front page and thinks, hey. We haven't talked about how I need some money here to take out my girlfriend, so I'll just do this weird thing where I'll strap a camera to the thing and try to get a picture of the lizard. This is weird, right? Pretty weird. Also, it's weird because at no point did we develop it, that Peter would be opportunistic about this incredibly. Like, he just went to the cops to sell out his friend and say, this guy is a real big problem. You need to deal with this problem. And then the cops are like, get out of here, kid. And then he goes, I'll make some money off this situation. That's well, his next thought. No, I don't for think it was me, money. Yeah, for me, the cause and effect of this is yeah. I've been kicked out. Oh, People think that. I'm crazy. Got it. Okay. If I get sense, a I picture of this guy, then I'll know. You that know, then people okay. will know. I, I also like just want to say this, the little intermediate scene in between this where they're, they're basically doing, uh, Reese Ethan's doing Jeff Goldblum in The Fly. Yeah. Good scene. Was he doing Jeff Goldblum in The Fly or was he doing Willem Dafoe from Spider-Man 1? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, a little mix of both well, dude i mean uh, trust it nick when when lizard gives everybody the lizard gas immediately i thought sleep a lizard yeah <laughs> like that's exactly Why, what i was I like we got so lizard. i had forgotten i had forgotten i was like we got so far into this movie without any fucking gas from an evil villain <laughs> like we got so far um but i do <laughs> i do want to say the idea of spider-man this was the first time we got like a very modern shot of spider-man like he sets up the webs he's mm -hmm. waiting for crime he's laying back he's on his mobile phone he's playing a game he's a teenager i'm like yes yes I yes this it. is happening this is 2012 this is spider-man yeah uh connor's of course monologues a little bit before finding perfection about finding perfection he's like i don't just want to be uh, fix everyone i want to make them all into lizards so he ups the dose to 200 milligrams <sighs> and then this Peter jekyll and hyde shit was clearly added in post because he is not reacting to his own VO at all the way Willem Dafoe was. This was clearly some VO that was recorded afterwards. And things were just kind of haphazardly cut. I don't, know if you, no. I don't know if you saw it too, Nick, but I was like, this is some ADR. 
they they had to chop this scene up because they didn't know how to get the lizard's point across. Yeah, and I still I, don't it, think they it, did. No, it's clunky as shit and weird. And yeah, again, I, I stand by the fact that the lizard himself is just one of the poorer aspects of this film. It's kind of just it doesn't really work for me. Yeah. But this lazy ass iguana coming down the spider web <laughs> this does, does work for me. Yo. <laughs> It works for me so hard. I hate it. It's so stupid. All this is stupid. I love seeing Peter actually make the spider web. So right? yeah. Here we so have cool. so many times. It's like, how the fuck do you do that? We actually see the way that he does it. I like that. I like that he's chilling. He has a plan. He's a smart guy. We know he's a smart guy. All of this works so well. So by the time we start getting these fucking iguanas just walking down <laughs> with their little bounce. I'm just like, you motherfuckers earned this, man. You, <laughs> you gave us so much real shit to some bullshit I'm here for. <laughs> As the resident Batman Returns apologist here in this house. Yo, I'm with you, bro. I Batman Penguins, Returns baby. is one of my favorite movies of all time. Those penguins got rocket launchers and they're They're being controlled by a dispatcher that's also like a weird conjoined twin from a circus. If the iguanas are walking down the web, they're walking down the web. Listen, man, you can you can train an iguana to fucking fight with a knife. You can train it to walk down a web. You know what I mean? Uh, Get him. Sick him says, <laughs> sick him says Reese Fins. I've got four <laughs> weddings and a funeral to get to. Oh, I love it. Uh, the lizard, of course, uh, is, uh, ambushes Peter and drags him down into the sewer water. And I like this because he's like, you can't breathe down here. I can. And Peter narrowly escapes. At first, he like scratches Peter's chest and he's like, hey. And then uh, Peter's like, they fight. And this scene doesn't look great. The CG in this is kind of not great for the lizard. It's not terrible. Though um, it's not terrible, it's passable. I guess it's yeah. serviceable, but, but it's I also, the best but, but uh, uh, yeah, but I'm in that sequence. I think I'm more just focused on like that. See, se- that's who this sequence is pretty tense for me. To I was gonna ask, I just think about like underwater video game levels and how much I hate them. But to be underwater with something that is way more formidable, this thing is it's already way more formidable for mm-hmm. you, right? But now you don't really just have your webs and your acrobatics, like you are at such, yeah. Uh, 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 a disadvantage here. It's, I think this sequence is really cool. And have you ever seen how alligators kill their prey? They spin them. They get a knife. Oh. They get a, they get a <laughs> knife. It's your one weakness, a small knife. Small now, you know what happens to a toad when it gets hit by lightning? Same thing that happens small to a knife. Fucking, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's something about, and, and this is another Somebody one of my... Somebody wrote that line, Tim. Somebody wrote that line in, in a script. That was Joss Whedon. Oh, Joss Whedon Joss. wrote that line. Oh, Look it up. That was one of his oh, punch Joss. ups. Um, this there's something about this, and and this is one of this is a nitpicky thing. This doesn't detract from my love of the movie at all. But when the lizard is doing like bear hugs and grips on Spider Man, and when they are underwater here, there's something about the body language of either the CG Spider Man or whoever's in the suit, and the body language of the CG lizard that doesn't fully sell things mm-hmm. to me. It doesn't feel as tense as it could. There's something where I just needed some more flailing or something mm. from Spider-Man. It's all a little well, too quick. To Tim's like way earlier point, some of this comes off like a cartoon. Like yeah, a, l- sure. a little bit. It looks like you're getting some squash and stretch and some of this stuff. And you're like, this is not quite here for me. Yeah, Particularly, the problem there, though, is that story-wise, sorry, finish your point, Carboni. Oh, no, I, did, I was just going to say, particularly at the end on the rooftop, Spider-Man just seems particularly calm because he has no eyes. And like, I don't think they put the Cirque du Soleil guy in like they used to. And there's something about like when the lizard is trying to crush Spider-Man and Spider-Man's just like laying there and it's like, well, I know you're choking underneath there, but I can't see it, buddy. You need to do something. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Emote a bit more. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, like story-wise for me, I actually think that Spider-Man's first major villain being the lizard is kind of perfect storytelling. Like mm-hmm. the lizard was, if I remember correctly, episode one of the 90s show. And like, granted... Mm-hmm chronologically that wasn't his first villain but like to the audiences it was i think that the lizard is a good villain because it works on different levels with peter and spider-man but also just it he's not that crazy and it's not that broad of this like holy shit the world's gonna be destroyed and that's probably this movie's biggest problem is that they made the lizard a takeover new york threat and it shouldn't have been that it should have just been Kurt Connors Family turns into the lizard. He's going to kill a couple people. And that is that is just as bad as what this movie turns into this gas plot that like is nonsensical and raising the stakes because they big. have to it's to a giant big. blue thing in the sky. But like, I feel like this sewer fight could have meant more 
and we would give it even more of a pass if more attention was given to it, like the Sandman fight in mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. three. And it's funny how much I'm comparing Sandman and Lizard, but I do think that they're kind of on equal grounds in terms of they're supposed to be sympathetic characters. We have lines to back that up, but then there's also a lot of things that seem to contradict it. And the Jekyll and Hyde stuff doesn't quite work and like gets a little convoluted, but I do think that the lizard is a perfect first Spider-Man villain. And this movie does a good job of it, but then drops the ball pretty, pretty hard. I think it just, I think it's another thing where it suffers from the proximity to the Raimi trilogy of like, he couldn't truly be Spider-Man's first villain because we had just had six villains, yeah. you know? And so, so and so it gets hurt by that. I'm trying to think of who the lizard's face reminds me of here. It reminds me. Oh, oh, the Goombas from the Super yeah, Mario Bros. That's what it is. Thank that's you. what it is. I think that, <laughs> yeah. that also really, really hurts everything. Yeah. In this the human me. eyes just like yeah, hey buddy those I baby blues hate it it's why i'm looking at a picture of it right now and i'm like i just wish because like when you look at the animated show and i'm I, i'm not again i never every iteration it. ever it he's got more of an alligator snout and uh, and, but and that's fine or, when or you snout you know that's fine when it, when you are animating mouths to lip syncing that works Right. But in here, you need to have the form of a human mouth in order to make the O's and all those. Instead of just a snout flapping, you right. need to like be able to animate that a bit more. So I understand why they went with it. It just doesn't look good at all. Yeah, it's I feel not. like they also think, made the. Harry. I feel like they also made the choice to give the lizard a very natural human voice, which yeah. was kind of interesting. Like it, it still sounds like Reese Evans, you yeah, know, which I think, true. which I think was like we're supposed to remember that it's Kurt Connors underneath there. But at the same time, it's like, you're just a British guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do, do you guys think that if Lizard is in No Way Home, that he gets a redesign to yeah. be more comic accurate? So. Because this, sure. movie, this movie hints at it with the lab coat in the, the one scene where he pops out of the, yeah. like when he, he says sleep to everybody. Yeah. Like he's in the coat. Like I imagine we'll get the coat. I even imagine we might get some purple pants. But do you think he gets the snout? I think if he gets a snout, then he just is a kind of monster that doesn't talk. I think he's like a Hulk. Like, I mean, not even I Hulk. Because Hulk make talks. It work though. I mean, I think there's got to be a way you can animate it somewhat. I think we should there's start just, a hashtag not. now. Let's come it, up with it'll a hashtag just right weird. now. Bring back the snout. Hashtag bring back the snout. Is that too mm-hmm. long for a hashtag? No, no that's a great that's hashtag. Cool. Hashtag snout. We could do that too. <laughs> Thank no, because that doesn't really. I mean, so much. <laughs> I just, I just think that doesn't have the the same urgency. Like, it's not really okay. a call to action. You're right. Hashtag he also just wasn't very confident with the first one. <laughs> <laughs> didn't get a laugh, but nothing I do does, so it doesn't no, really matter. No. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, I do love the fact that Peter comes out of the water. He goes, "Oh, that sucked." <laughs> I mm-hmm. was like, "Okay, that's good for me." Um, so many bacterial infections. Oh, oh my god! Gone. In all the cuts. And here's the thing hole with alcohol for a long time. What's oh, God damn it, Nick. Um, One thing that sucks is when you go to the Thanksgiving dinner, he's he's going to notice the slash on your chest. You know, he's going to recognize the big ass slash on your chest. The problem is Captain Stacy can can sense one single drop of blood because he's a cop. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's a special ability. Lizzie heads up back up to the web and finds Peter's camera with the the brother with the brother Pete. That's that's what it is from now on. Sorry, I got it got kind of late last night. I was like, I can't type lizard anymore. Uh, It got the brother Pete touch on the back that says property of peter parker and he goes peter parker and then crushes the camera parker heads to gwen's house and he's a little worse for the wear and she's like oh well, let me take your shirt off and tend to your wounds and it's like oh i swoon the Captain's the- upside down kiss is obviously a much more iconic and memorable moment but this is this is what the upside down kiss should feel like this Bro, whole yeah. scene you know why and you brought it up earlier anthony and i'm glad you did i'm glad somebody said it because you you brought you 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 got the parallel with the fly right, but what we don't know, what we couldn't possibly know, was how much Jeff Goldblum chess moment this was going to be for us right now, right? Mm-hmm. This is not mask. where I thought you were going with this. We had, <laughs> sizzle, we had him laying down mm-hmm. with the sizzle chest, and I was like, I'm so, sorry, <laughs> did Jeff Goldblum just call? Because he wants his his uh, uh, chest sweat back. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. So I, I'm going to take this in a different direction. Uh, Thank you. Please. <laughs> weird. Why? 
with, with, with something Carboni said earlier. Carboni, Carboni brought up the the scene, one of the best scenes, honestly, in any Spider-Man movie ever, which is the end of Spider-Man 2 of Kirsten Dunst, like, looking out and kind of being, like, after the go get him tiger, that moment of realization of, like, what did I just do? Like, what did I just sign my, my, my life up for, right? And this scene, this conversation is that, but actually with something to back it up. And, like, it, it is not just preceded immediately by her running away from her wedding and it feeling mm-hmm. awkward as hell and us just <laughs> writing all of that off because this moment was good. This was earned, and it's earned through dialogue that is in this scene but also backed up from the previous scenes before it, which is yeah. a crazy concept, I'm sure. But, no, I, I love this, man. I, I think that it took one look in the Raimi movies, but one look wasn't enough. We needed more, and this was what that more was. Yeah, the Raimi movies trade on our trade on the symbology and our knowledge of Spider-Man. These movies try to make you understand why the Spider-Man characters do what they do. Very well said. Good call. Uh, 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 uh. Gwen. She Chelsea. does this little thing where she kisses his wrist in this scene, by the way, y'all, which is like such a little relationship thing. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Where he's talking about how he feels bad for like creating the lizard, and she, there's just this little thing where she just gives like a little kiss to his wrist. And I'm just like, that's such an intimate, like, couple thing. Tim, will you kiss your wrist for me right now so that me and Andy can watch? Yeah. You're supposed to practice on your elbow, but you can do your wrist, too. Hey, why your elbow? Because it's supposed to elbow? feel like lips. Oh, I thought you oh, meant, like, okay. supposed to kiss your fucking... Yeah. No, I you're like, supposed you to kiss... Your... I was like, can you get your mouth that far? I don't have that yeah. flexibility. Captain Stacy offers Gwen some cocoa, but she tells him I can't because I got cramps. And then he's like, oh, I hate okay. this scene. <laughs> it's bad. And human wo- I, have, I have to raise a human woman. Ew, human women. And yes. then he just like walks away. I get it because he's Captain Stacy and he's old and he's Irish and he's a cop. And like, I get it. But like, come Still, on. Still, this is a guy that probably <laughs> seen murder scenes. He's like, I don't, whatever. This uh, guy also cares more about his, like his children than anything from what we can gather. So like, it's weird. I do love See, now. Now his, here's the thing, though. Perspective from some women, both Jenna and Gia, were both just like, "Yo, that's our get out of jail free card." Like, that's the move. When we that's were young, it's move. like, yeah. "Yo, just throw some shit out," and like your parents are just gonna be like, "I'm not dealing with the shit." Like, yeah, cool. You guys are doing some shit. I don't care what you're doing there. I'm not getting involved. And and that's again, fair. the only reason why I do like this scene is is the actors and their back and forth and their their chemistry because it's. It's it's funny, and I feel like whenever I'm yeah. leaning towards what movies I enjoy and don't like, if you give me like a, a kind of crappy story with characters that I enjoy with good conversations, I'm probably gonna like it despite the terrible story. Um, and in here, um, I don't love the story, and I don't love a lot of the other bad stuff that we've mentioned. But at the end of the day, it's really good, charismatic actors having awesome back and forths, and it just it just feels good to watch it. You're yeah. never, you're rarely ever kind of cringing yeah. from the awkward, like, oh, why, why would you write that? That's terrible. No, I mean, look, if you need somebody to, if you need somebody to play like an, like a grumbly, out of touch, like sardonic dad, like, it's Ken, Dennis, like Lear. Dennis Leary is going to fucking do it. <laughs> but like, but it was also, I remember I made a note here when I saw this movie in the theater, the, hey, do you want Coco? Like, no, I have cramps. Like that sort of, I, I remember watching this scene and I was like, oh, Captain Stacy dies in this movie. <laughs> this was where i realized it this is where i was like they're gonna kill him in this movie yeah yeah <laughs> um we do get a line here that i do like though where she's like he's like i'm sorry she's like i don't want i don't like coco i'm a grown person and he goes okay well i could have swear we had a conversation last week about you wanting to live in a chocolate house and she was like that's chloric that's not even that's not even possible it's too chloric and then she turns around and it's that moment of just being embarrassed in front of your yeah. parents, in front of the, or by your parents, in front of the person you like, yeah, and then they nail that scene. It's a weird line, but it's like no, it was so good. I, I love that live too. In a chocolate house, and I'm 41 years old. Um, let's see. Gwen tells Peter, he's like, "Listen, man, you got that look in your eye. It reminds me of my dad. Every day he straps on a badge and he takes on bad guys, and it, and it worries her to death." But Peter's like, "Listen, I'm the only person that can stop Connors because uh, I made him." And she goes, "Oh, you made him? Uh, he made you." As which, what you got to say, right? It's Batman 1989 mm-hmm. all over again. It's like this is a weird you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight. So what did you say? I asked that of all my Martha. <laughs> Martha <laughs> then Peter. he takes, and then he's like, <laughs> Peter. 
Fair. <laughs> Cliff Robertson's dead. Every time you do that, you're doing that to a dead man. You're a horrible person. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing right now. If I know Cliff Robertson, and I like to think I do, Anthony Carboni, he's up there laughing his ass off at this. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I did say it that way. I did say it that way. Uh, then he takes Gwen for a swing around New York, and it's hot. Uh, Connors tells himself uh, that it's only slightly better. Excuse me. He talks to himself, and it's only slightly better than the Willem Dafoe talking to himself. And then he douses himself with more serum and heads over to Midtown High to kill Peter Parker. And he enters through the potty. Now, I don't know how these schools are built. But I don't yeah. understand why every school builds massive tunnels underneath their toilets. But I, I don't do think love, that's what happens. I do love the nudge, nudge, wink, wink at the at the you know the New York uh, tall tale of the alligators the are still in the suit yeah. and they're going to come out of the they're going to come out of the toilets at you. That's pretty like, amazing, actually. It's kind of funny that they did that. Uh, he throws Peter through a bunch of walls and Peter takes uh, the opportunity to change and they start ruffling it up and then Peter takes the opportunity to change into his costume uh, and they argue as they fight and I kind of hate the music. Such a Spider-Man uh, moment though. Yeah. When, when he, I, webs his, he webs his bag as he's flying through the wall because he's like, Spider-Man's got to come out of this other side of this wall. Yeah, we've got to get him in the costume. I uh, don't know what the lizard really wants here. I'm still a little, I'm still a little soft on what the lizard wants, but I'm okay. He wants I'm to kill okay. Peter because it's like, yeah. he's the only person that can stop him, but it's also just the motivations aren't But But it's more like he's pontificating at this point about stuff like he wants and how he's going to make the world better. And I'm just kind of mm -hmm. like, I'm still not sure what you want, lizard, but go on. It's one of those moments where you're like, if you guys just talked this out, I'm sure you could come to a conclusion. Yeah. Uh, Peter but we get the Stan Lee scene, so it's all oh, great, right? That's a Raimi. That dude, that's a fucking Raimi gag. That feels like a Raimi gag. It is and I definitely like a Raimi it. gag, but it's great. I love it, but it feels weird in the context of the rest of this movie. That's all. It's I just more heightened it. than other things are. I love it. It reminds me of, and I, I don't remember which came first, but I think True Lies came. It was first. the chicken? There's, True Lies had a scene like this, right? Where the the Harrier Jet's tail rips through the background as a guy's cleaning and he can't hear yes. it. Yes. Yeah. And that, uh, that also, like... uh, also Alien Three. The guy is like the janitor on the on the prison planet is like he's wearing his headphones and he's mm -hmm. like mopping up and the alien just comes down and eats him. And then in the next scene, you can see the like whoever the new janitor is like mopping and like looking up like he's yeah, terrified. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's really scared of the hole. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 that, fucking awesome. Stan Lee. Like I I think this is so cool. I love it this entire good. scene. And, and like, I, I don't know, I, I'm clearly in the minority here. I love the music. I love the choreography of this. Like, I think this entire fight scene is really, really rad. I don't, it, like, the music is not memorable to me, but the fight is really good. I, I particularly, like, I do love that we understand how to choreograph Peter. There's a, there's a part where he's sticking to the ceiling and not through anything the lizard does or whatever, but just through his own strength, he accidentally pulls off a light fixture and he's kind of, like, unsteady on his own hands and... Mm -hmm. I, there's great shit and the lizard has his regenerating tail that like peter's yeah. holding on to and it's, it all en it all ends with that fucking peter crawling around him like a spider and I cocooning him that's so cool and, and it's so good and again yeah the, the thing that i don't love about the music here tim is that i feel like we need to feel more tension until we get the let me cocoon you here's mary jane this part's very very sweet and the the score that they're playing in the background dips from like this is a, a here are a bunch of major notes and this is a very successful triumphant moment and here's a couple of minor notes and maybe things aren't great back to the major notes and everything's fine and i don't really know if we're supposed to feel tense at all or if we're supposed to feel awesome i feel like it's just it's just kind of there and but, um, I, I like that, out. though, because like to me, I think we're supposed to not feel tense. I feel like we were supposed to entirely feel like this is Spider-Man's coming out. This is Spider-Man fighting a Spider-Man. And sure, he might get a couple hits, but like this is the first time we're really seeing him fight the lizard. And he is confident. He is trying to take him down. He's fucking cocooning him in the most ridiculous but way. Even, then, but I need way then, more than that. Then I need, I need way more Alvin, than that. I need an Alvin Silvestri like third act marvel i just we're want people the, to remember spinning the camera around people didn't and... love the avengers theme until it was 10 movies later when it was played a bazillion times like no, when avengers bro. first came out people were like the but theme I, was i'm really not lame. talking about a theme like i'm the not avengers talking about theme, a theme and we can all agree the lord of the rings theme is terrible yeah. oh fuck you i'm not i'm not talking about a theme i'm just talking about <laughs> the composition of the music i need it to rise and yeah, swell same. and i need this to really be spider-man's triumphant moment if that's what it is but, uh, but I don't remember noticing the music. That's all. I 
to go back to to the action itself though i just i love the way that they've that, that these fights flow like there's it never stops it's always yeah. going and and we'll see that again when when he attacks him on the uh, at the on the antenna array uh it's just Someone was like, hey, it's just Spider-Man. He should never stop moving. There should never be a point where he's like standing still and like monologuing. Even when he's monologuing, he should be swinging around webbing, doing something because he's a, he's like the world's ultimate gymnast. Why yeah. would you, when you have that power, why would you ever stand still? Why would you ever give your enemy, uh, you know, a, a, a static target to shoot at, right? Uh, uh, and then, of course, this whole scene ends with he <laughs> walks over to Gwen. And he goes, I'm going to throw you out the window now. Window She's like, now. what? <laughs> he throws her out and webs her. Great. She's like, what the fuck? <laughs> By the way, shout out to Gwen Stacy. Knocking the lizard on the head with the with trophy. The trophy. Hey, Mary Jane movie. Watson, where were you for three movies? <laughs> Mary, Jane. <laughs> Mary Jane Watson's like the, the my my choices are uh, uh fucking James Franco and Toby Maguire here. I, I want out. I want out of this. Yeah, she was driving um, the PT Cruiser. Oh God, Flash Gordon. She's like Flash Gordon with PT Cruiser. I choose him. Then we get a banger <laughs> of a scene uh, here. I'm uh, oh, sorry. Excuse me. Peter falls lizard back of the shit. He's like, he follows him back into the um the potty and notices the the Oscorp lab thing and he, which I was like I get that but doesn't he know he's at Oscorp but I guess he he's like maybe knows. I'll go back to Oscorp it's weird uh, it's we don't need clues anymore right we uh, know what's going on here I just want to say great reception on that Sony Ericsson phone down in these sewers here we're not <laughs> fantastic to. bro yeah. it's, hey it's crazy you got a that Sony Vio down there yeah. <laughs> how about it how about one of those PSPs that Greg's always talking about <laughs> Uh, Gwen calls Peter as he hunts the lizards through the sewers and he asks her to, he's like, listen, you know how to develop an antidote? She's like, the fuck are you talking to, bro? <laughs> the fuck are you talking to? He goes, Gwen, you head over Oscorp. It, they give it to each other and they do it in a way that's like, we're smart science kids solving a problem the way a Spider-Man would in a mm -hmm. comic book. Exactly. That's all. Uh, Bowman. she goes, yeah, I'll head to Oscorp. I'll take care of that. Don't worry about it. And then he comes across Connor's makeshift lab in the sewers. And he's like, this guy has gone off his rockers. Also, where does he get all the power for this in the sewers? I wonder. Also, I my, my also is that a, is that an ultra wide Sony Vio? <laughs> my favorite thing down here in yeah. the sewers is Peter Parker discovering how the technology works and seeing, oh, the serum goes in there and then it goes up that the MacGuffin and all the smoke goes up. And then the way that they depict this visually to the viewer is here's a fuckload of lizards. <laughs> like, yeah, like, because, you know, this what Connors is right now is this sort of green outline of a bad lizard, a big monster lizard. And then they the computer somehow knows. Oh, when the smoke goes out, here's a shit ton of lizards going out. Like, everybody's going to turn into lizards. It's so funny. Like, it's all so Geico like geckos. Lizards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm going to turn New York City into a bunch of rangos. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, uh, the thing that allows them to do this is the Branzioni device or whatever the fuck mm -hmm. it was called. Uh, yeah. Then Lizzie uh, gets attacked by a SWAT team, and he turns them all into lizards. And I'm like, all right, this I movie's like officially gone off. The rock. He's quietly walking down the street and he's put his lab coat back on like doop, 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 yeah. doop. Nothing to see here, folks. <laughs> what Nothing I really needed here. was a house to be on fire and him to be in an old lady sweater and turn around yes. and be the lizard. <laughs> so ridiculous. Uh, there's only, let's see. Hey, New um, York SWAT, send one guy to check to see if the lizard's dead. Just one. Yeah. Don't everybody get up on that lizard. Uh, he releases all the green gas and Peter calls Gwen to tell her to leave. Oscorp because the lizard's headed there, but she won't leave. She's like, there's only eight minutes <laughs> Peter left. Peter so calls up and he's like, time. he's like, you wouldn't believe what shit we just pulled out in the third act. Yeah. <laughs> lizard gas. <laughs> she goes, yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, but she gets a good idea. Maybe I can use the Barnzini device to dis disperse the anecdote, right? Uh, Captain Stacy and the team hunt down Spidey. Uh, love all the first person swinging stuff here that he does. Uh, I like that good guy Spidey replaces the sewer cap as he gets out of the sewer. It's smart because the sewer cap back into, into that place. Thing. Exactly. People could die. Uh, they moment. tase him and put cuffs on him. And then when Captain Stacy takes off his mask, he goes absolutely nuts on the SWAT team. Uh, but Stacy, of course, being better, gets the beat on him. And, and, and Peter comes clean. He's like, listen, he's like, holy shit, you're my daughter's boyfriend. He's like, look, that's cool. We'll put that aside for a second. The lizard's head at Oscorp. Gwen's there. And Captain Stacy's like, why would Gwen be there at this time of night? And Peter's like, you know, we don't need to talk about, you know, specifics. Just understand that she's there. And he's like, no, 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 no. Why would my daughter be at Oscorp this late at night? 
Maybe I told her to go there. I don't know. Captain don't Stacey, know. don't, don't worry about this. Okay? It's weird. Well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm 24. Maybe I'm 40. It depends on where this spotlight's hitting me in this scene. Exactly. Uh, I don't know but why of your course, daughter's at Oscorp. He's like, you got to let me go. And he's like, all right, fine. I'll let you go, Peter. And then Peter gets winged by a bullet as he stands up because the dude, the same dude from The Dark Knight who shot the fucking Batman or The Dark Knight Rises who shot Batman's EMP gun apparently works in New York as well. And he's like, yeah. I'll shoot the Spider-Man guy. Uh, and he's like, oh, man, my leg That's really the gig hurts. economy. I hope this thing heals by uh, 20 minutes from now when I'm facing off against the lizard. Maybe I'll just web this a little bit, but Peter can't I, I have there. questions. I also had questions about the severity of this wound, which seems to alternately be like bleeding a lot and bleeding a little. And I, you, get, you, get, you get like three minutes into this sequence and you understand where it's at. But for the first couple of minutes, I was like, how bad is this, Spider-Man? Did you get nicked? Like, yeah, you got nicked. But, also, but then there I'll was, just, but then there was like gonna... a bloody handprint. I don't know. I'm just going to throw it's it out here, no, and in here. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Andy. Do you, uh, this, I'll go around the group. Andy, yeah. we'll start with you. Do you need your legs to swing? <laughs> Great question. You, d you don't. You definitely don't, Nick. <laughs> I mean, you need like the fast start off. You need like the fast run up to it. Sure. I think sure. that's what he's mainly worried about. But here's what, how confusing and how badly, um, not, not that it's that awful, but I just don't think that they really know what to convey to the audience. Because when I see the bloody handprint, Carboni, I'm not thinking, oh, he's really hurt. I'm thinking DNA. They're going to figure out who Spider-Man is. Like, I'm right I there think with that you. That's a I think that's a plot point for like they're going to figure out who this guy but also is. Also, everybody knows already. Come on, <laughs> yeah. this is yeah. not a world. This is not a world where it's hard to figure out who Spider-Man is. But yeah, I thought the same thing, Nick. Where where. Even if you need your legs, you can do his like you can do his pullback slingshot yeah, thing to get up. We got a lot but, of different ways we can do it. That's why I was like, how much is he bleeding? How much blood is he losing? Because he can't grip with his hands. He can't make like upper body stuff happen. And so I would just there's there's a period, and this is something that this movie struggles with. Anything that happens takes me about 45 seconds to really figure out what's going on. It is not instantly visually there. Uh, just because Mark Webb is like, hey, I'll figure out action movies. Don't worry. By the time this is over, I'm going to be so good at this. Exactly. Peter, of course, is like, I know how to, what I need to solve this problem, guys. <laughs> cranes. Nude. I need some motherfucking cranes. And then to everyone's shock, or perhaps to no one's shock, we cut over to see what C. Thomas Howell is doing. And it's like, like, you're in this movie store. <laughs> He looks like present day Johnny Knoxville, doesn't he? I just, I always think that in this movie. He, he does kind of look like Johnny Knoxville. He looks like Johnny Knoxville and Steve O had a kid. Uh, mm -hmm. You're in the, uh, C. Thomas Howell, of course, is like, hey, it looks like Spider Man needs some help. Call the, are the boys still working in, in, in uh, the cranes? And the other guy goes, dude, it's past five o'clock. No one who is a uh, union worker is working past five o'clock right now. If My we move these pissed. cranes now, if we move these cranes now, we're going to get a $15,000 fine from the city. Yeah, <laughs> every single one. Anyway, <laughs> time to repay your debt. He calls out over the radio. He's like, all tower cranes on sixth. Swing your jib arms over the avenue. Boom angles at 90 degrees. Spider-Man needs these big Atomic boys. batteries High to power. And Turbines to speed. Let's give them a clear approach <laughs> over. And I got to be honest with you guys. Please I remember do. the scene being the stupidest fucking thing that ever happened. But when C. Thomas Howell barks those orders over that fucking radio, it's hype as fuck. I don't Dude, care, Tim. The I music care. works here, Tim. This is where Thank the music you. fucking pops Thank off. Thank you, because this is, this is the proper theme. The, the thing with The Amazing Spider-Man is there's two variations on the theme, and we'll hear a lot mm. more in the second one. But like, there's the bombastic, more Superman-esque elements of it that are very, a lot of horns for the horner. I forgot the hashtag, mm -hmm. but bring out the horns, horns or whatever. Horns the horn god. But then, then there's the, the more horns. just horns kind of horn. like general build kind of stuff. This combines the two to great effect. I've loved these, this scene in every movie we've seen it in so far. I loved it in Spider-Man 1. I loved it in Spider-Man 2. But this one is so self-aware where the, the cranes all have it to get together with the fucking spotlight, the video game spotlight. It is so dumb. It is so cartoony. And they're just like, yeah, we're doing it. We're just fucking doing it. And people yeah. are going to talk shit. Fuck all of you. Fuck all of you. We're doing it. And I love it. I goddamn love it, man. Good it's, for everyone that had anything to do with this. Did Peter. you notice that Peter, like Spider-Man, doesn't get the American flag in this one? See Thomas Howell does. Yeah. <laughs> See Thomas the Howell gets the American flag. Does. The working man are the true heroes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, of course, Peter starts to run, but he can't because his leg hurts. So he webs his leg, and it seems to let him run all a little bit better. That's some, that's some hard boy shit. I'm just going to yeah. go ahead and say it. Yeah. Webbing a that gunshot wound. 
I mean, it's that, the equivalent. That's, that's to just, the straight of like burning the wound. Yeah, that's sort of burning thing. the yeah. wound, the cauterizing it. Yeah. Uh, he and then he starts to run, and he runs, and you're like, oh, he's gonna make it, and he runs, and he shoots his web at the farthest crane, and he just falls short. But no, he doesn't, because who should save him with a steel girder and a crane? See, motherfucking Thomas, motherfucking yes. Howell, no. star of Fox's kindred, the embraced. See, this... Thomas Howell. Thank you so much to Jack's dad, C. Thomas Howell. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a moment is for me <laughs> where you guys all know uh, if, if you have a nice score you have a hype moment someone comes in to save someone or somebody like powers up moves to the next level i'm a sucker all you got to do is just do that and i'm going to be very very happy this is an example of like one step too far i think where it's like you already powered up. We already have the setup. We don't need the near Did miss. Not need this you know, scene. like no. and then to the hero moment for this See, dude. Thomas like Howell. I don't know. I don't know. But like, no matter how I feel about that, it didn't fully take away from the excitement I had for the rest of it. So Gosh, like, good right. for them. But it got close. This was this was pushing the boundaries. It, it's not easy. This one. It's not easy. This one because they put a long tail on this fucking kite. And I. Yeah. Uh, but at least at least they teamed it up with. We have had a movie where we've seen Spider-Man kind of struggling with his own, uh, with his own motility, with his own ability to like navigate through the sky, and so this comes with our third act. I've got to get to Gwen. I've got to get there in time, and so it doesn't. I'm with you, Nick. It doesn't bother me the way it did when I first saw it. It just do be a little weird and ramy. It's cheesy <laughs> and weird as fuck. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. But I'm. But again, on the other end of the spectrum, the music is hype and it goddamn if I don't swing exactly like the way he swings in the Spider-Man video games. Like yeah. that's exactly how I do it. And I think it's depicted really damn well here. One world uh, building note. Nobody knows why Spider-Man is going to the Oscorp Tower no, or who really Spider-Man is yet. Um, but it's wild that the news is like, thank God Spider-Man's here and everybody's yeah. like, yay, Spider-Man. And okay, I'm just Spider-Man. like, I'm just like, oh, wow. Last couple days, big, big for Spider-Man's IMDb rating. Yeah, I he's fucking, a rising star. That's one line I really, really <laughs> hate on the video. news of like Spider-Man's on the way, but he seems to be injured. <laughs> it's like, well, what? I know Tim, I know Tim hey, always loves that. Tim hey, loves it when Mark, the news just tells us exposition. Hey, Mark, we know that Spider-Man's injured. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mark, I get it? Yeah. Uh, Peter makes it to Oscorp and slingshots himself to the roof as Lizard finishes setting up the Denali device. Uh, and I love, love, I think this might be my, one of my favorite shots in this whole movie. He's setting it up, and just in the background, just over his shoulder, we see Peter, or Spider-Man, silently crawl up the side of, like, the building kind of look at so him. So cool. It's fucking cool. And then, like an uh, Einstein poster. Ah, <laughs> don't do it. The wind. Don't do it. Ah, if know, you keep you're... doing that, I'm going to do the beater. I'm going to bring that up more, okay? Okay, okay. Understand I'm what you're I'm doing. Sorry. I'm sorry. Ah, Andy, ah, I invented facial hair. Ah. <laughs> Nobody had a beard before me, Andy. Ah. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, wow, I actually God. did turn on that real quick. Yeah, I really did. <laughs> you know what? That's that's my superpower, Carboy. I can make you hate anything within 30 seconds of you saying it. Uh, Gwen runs into her father who volunteers. He's like, listen, Gwen, I'll run. She's like, this is the antidote. He's like, I'll run it upstairs to Peter. And she's like, no, 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 you can't do it. You don't understand. Uh, you don't understand what's going on. He goes, I get it. She goes, no, you don't. He goes, I get it. Your boyfriend is a man of many masks. To which the patrol man standing right next to them is like, boyfriend Spider-Man? <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's that, it's, the, Parker, thing, it's the Parker kid whose parents did all the spider research for Oscorp. It's very well documented. Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> this is a bad line. This is a bad, poorly written line. Do you uh, think so? I like this moment, and I like this with Captain Stacy, and I like that he's come to the realization that, like, Peter cares for his daughter. Spider-Man cares for the city. I don't like this shit, but it's here not, we are. It's not that it's not how or what happens. It's just the line. Your boyfriend is a man of many masks. We don't, that's basically telling the audience we get that you're stupid. Captain Stacy understands that Peter Parker, Spider-Man, Gwen understands that Captain Stacy yeah. knows he's Spider-Man. We're making this handoff. All you would have had to really say in a I know your that, boyfriend like, has spun many a web of lies. Right? Yeah. Like okay. Fact. And it d- it doesn't help that they hand off a literal physical baton, does it? Yes. <laughs> does that all he help? Needed, all he needed to really, all he really needed to say was Gwen, like stop her, be like Gwen. I understand. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm like, gonna I go help it. Peter. You right. know what I mean? Exactly. Like, that's all like, you need. I'm, I know what's going on, but anyway, Gwen, uh, he he has great power. There's responsibility <laughs> out there. <laughs> Listen, Dad, can you bring that down into like one? If you can make it better. 
You had to. Uh, we go upstairs, the spider and Lizzie get it on. And I think this fight scene is great. Uh, Lizzie is great. better of Peter and snaps his web shooters. And he goes, poor Peter Parker, no mother, no father, all alone. And then he's like, I, and then he, he also goes, says no Uncle Ben, which like, hey, whoa, damn, <laughs> Kurt, you're Shit, really dude. listening. Damn. Like, another, you know, it, you that's me, active Kurt. listening. Yeah. You, in another world, this is a good friendship. You're and a good listen, guy. <laughs> I don't like the alliteration here. I don't like the poor Peter Parker. I think this is kind of stupid, and I think it's kind of a comic book 1.0. Now imagine it Now imagine it coming out of a face that has no lips and just a beak. Exactly. Whole, That's whole, tough whole, to whole. do. Uh, but I'll tell you what. When he says all alone, Spider-Man, no then you home. hear off, off screen, he's not alone. He has me and my motherfucking shoddy Bugatti. Yeah, fuck and yeah. It's Dennis Leary. But also Dennis Leary. Yeah. Just sneak attack. Shoot him in the head, Dennis! Yeah. Dennis! Shoot him in the fucking head! Andy, how many times as a cop, as a police captain, are you going to come in New York City, in the MCU, are you going to come have the opportunity to come across a nine-foot-tall lizard man? You got to monologue a little bit, bro, bro. You got to enjoy that moment. No, but I'm yeah, but you could still go for the on. head after. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I'm talking yeah, about yeah. later on where he's oh, just mean, hidden. Don't he's shoot hidden him in the arms. hand. Don't shoot, shoot him, him in the, the head. fucking but head. But I do, I do like the way the lizard looks after Captain Stacy shoots him in his bad hand, the one that he regenerated. He's like, he's like oh, and he just bad. gives this Thank look, God. just like you motherfucker. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how hard I worked for this thing. Like this is literally what it's all about, you asshole. I was gonna kill a bunch of veterans, dude. <laughs> For this fucking ad. Uh, Captain Stacy backs Lizzie down while Peter heads up to the Stugatti device. Uh, but before he can reload, Lizzie stabs him in the gut and then heads to Peter, uh, who manages just in the nick of time to put hey, the can I say th Can I say that the movie goes just as fast through Captain Stacy getting stabbed in the gut as you just did? Yep. Dude, That's why I wrote it yeah, that way. This whole scene happens so fast. I challenge someone out there, though. Some beautiful best friend out there. Can you please watch this entire five-hour review? And write down in the comments every single name that Nick does for the device. <laughs> <laughs> because at some point, Peter puts the anecdote in the Christine Miliani device and saves the city. Christine <laughs> <Stan> Miliani. <laughs> <laughs> that is next like, Christina Milian. <laughs> yeah. That's like the farthest from the actual. The actual name is like the like Ga Galen device or Earlier something. Earlier he said Stugatti. Yeah, <laughs> so many great the, names. So the that's the funny story. device. <laughs> I'm glad you guys picked up on that. That's I thought great. I was going crazy. Uh, man, the rocket shoots off and turns Lizzie back into Connors, but Peter uh, is almost uh, falls and he's almost crushed by the antenna array, uh, which almost assuredly kills everyone down on the street below. Yeah, uh, Lizzie dead. now saves Peter. Connors now saves Peter. Um, I made a nick note on this off. part. My nick note is re-siphons, more like rip diphons. Am I right? Damn, that's great. Because <laughs> he that's looks pretty so muscular. Good. Oh yeah. yeah, he does. You're right. Also, his then, arm rips off. So there's that fun too. Yeah, uh, it's got it's got levels. Uh, Peter runs to the side of Captain Stacy, who tells him that he has to get out of here before the other cops show up. And Peter's like, "I'm not going anywhere." And he goes, "Listen, Peter, I was wrong about you. The city needs you." Uh, but listen, this comes with a caveat. He he, hands he has to run. He's like, he's not <laughs> the he's not the hero we deserve, but he's the hero we need. Like, I'm just How like, yeah, heard would it, be? heard it. Heard How it, hilarious would it. it be if he grabs the mask, puts it on, and runs as the cops chase him, and the camera pans over, and there's just an old man and a kid. And he's like, why are they chasing him, Dad? He's like, because <laughs> yeah. they have to. He has to run. <laughs> a dark night. Uh, you know, I love it, though. I love it. I think it works for this character. I think it works for this depiction of all of these characters. Him not being able to be with Gwen, but then what we see him almost immediately is him then being with Gwen. That is Spider-Man. Yeah. Good for them. It's Spider-Man, but it's also like, I'm going to go back and say it again. Real people are messy. Movies shouldn't be this messy because it takes, this movie is constantly taking the wind out of its own sails. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I I didn't it, though. like I didn't want it to go the same way as the original Spider-Man where it's like, we can't be together because you have to be safe. Like that does suck. We all agree that that That's sucked. Stupid. It's a dead but the fact that we, But the fact that we spent seven, like we're about to spend seven minutes of the film pretending that's going to happen yeah for See, no but, my, but my thing there though is like i like it because it's in the the raimi movies it was literally just mary jane peter parker 
Green Goblin, and then he had to deal with all the Harry stuff. With mm-hmm. this, there's the elements of there's New York, there's the cops, there's, there's so Thomas many Howell. more. There's so many, exa- but real talk, exactly. It's like there are the people of New York that are on his side. Like there's elements at play here that this speech makes sense and like adds up to the the characters of Captain Stacy, having learned that like, yo, this kid not only is with my daughter, but it's also the hero that we do need. Hashtag Dark Knight. It, it makes sense, mm-hmm. but it but it also like it makes sense coming out of Captain Stacy's mouth. What I guess I don't like is Peter's immediate reaction to it and the fact that he turns into Raimi Peter Parker for five minutes here, and then we end on a ha psych. I wouldn't do that. And I'm just like, what do you, you why why? Like, why do this? Why not just be like, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, I feel like a lot of movies, a lot of great movies, you walk out of the theater and you learn something about yourself. And what I learned here is I was like, there's no fucking way Peter Parker, who's what, 16 in this, 17? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would stick with this promise. There's just, it's not going to happen, guys. I'm sorry. Like, have you met Gwen Stacy? She's the full, she's the full thing. She's the full deal here, right? She's smart. I think everything and this kid's got raging hormones he's like this i promise you this i will i will consider what you're telling me yeah i will try (laughs) well i think but i think what we've seen with like this version of peter and this version of gwen is like captain stacy would die peter would feel guilty but he would meet this version of peter immediately speaks to gwen doesn't avoid gwen yeah this the next five minutes or ten minutes this movie are are and i think it's one of those things where it's like your father says you know, your father told me that we shouldn't be together. Right. I think he might be right. I'm scared because I've lost people already. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. the Peter Parker. This is. And if Gwen then says, Hey, no, that's my decision to make. That's our decision to make. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't do this alone. Right. Like that's sort of, like, that feels more like this Peter and Gwen than him for five minutes, turning into the Tobey Maguire, Peter and Gwen Stacy having to knock on his door and be like, you didn't come to my dad's funeral. You fucking dick. Yeah, hard scene. Good and scene. then hard scene. And then at the end of the school scene, to go. But sometimes promises you don't keep are the more fun. Whatever the fuck he says. Yeah. And what I expect JK. there is the movie, like the camera zooms out, and then a voiceover, and it's Andrew Garvey. He's like, and that's the story of how I betrayed my girlfriend's dead dad and his yeah. wishes. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> it's so let me weird. Explain, let, me, let me explain to you how I wrote this. Right. So Peter <laughs> comes into class late. Uh, right. Uh. Uh, well, first off, I got a lot of great jokes in here, guys. I know we're really, really <laughs> fucking long. But know, let me read it's this. It's probably tough. It's probably uh, tough. Dude, she comes in all, and she goes, they're all my, bangers. She goes, my father died. There was a funeral. They shot off rifles and they made speeches. Two of my teachers showed up. Uh, and one person from the administrative office, whose name I can't remember. You know the one I'm talking about. The lady with all the cat homemade cat mugs. Was it Susan? Was it Karen? Martha. That's what it was. Martha. <laughs> oh, okay. You got <laughs> there. You got there. Worth it. Okay. Second off. There we go. Peter tells Gwen he can't see her anymore, yada, yada. And she immediately gets it. My dad told you to made your promise, right? Love she's that. Not, she's not stupid, right? And Peter's like, yeah, I'm sorry. He made me promise. Uh, next day, all that stuff happens. Uh, I like the scene, by the way. I don't want to gloss over it where he comes home and Aunt May, like, he's crying. And Aunt May hugs him. Then he hands her the eggs. He's like, I finally mm-hmm. got those eggs. Great scene. So good. Uh, and then comes into class, right? Oh, he finally listens to Uncle Ben's message. And man, it is fucking epic. And I'm like, this is a little much here. It's mm-hmm. a little but, much, but God, it's epic. Mind you, Uncle Ben just thought Peter, Peter was like blowing off some steam on a walk, and he leaves in this long, like, this is the last time we'll speak because I'll probably get shot by a gun. <laughs> You're my message. hero, Peter, yeah. and he I love shatter- you. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, he did shatter a door. They think maybe he's on drugs. Like, I yeah. understand the, the, this message. I get it. Um, and then, of course, Peter sees the ma- – don't forget about the massive Spider-Man graffiti because he's inspiring the entire city. Uh, he it. and Flash are friends now, uh, even though he doesn't want to talk to Gwen. And he's not having it. And then Gwen watches as Peter walks into literature class late. Miss Ritter tells the class there's only one as she's giving a lecture on how many types of stories are all. She goes, everyone thinks there's ten types of stories, but there's not. I would argue there's only one type of story. Tim, what kind of story is that? It's the who am I? Are you sure you want to know? My story is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> oh, no. There it is. No. Are you there it is. kidding me? They put that in this movie. I can't believe you guys didn't catch that. No, no I didn't. I mean, That's so oh, funny. She's the who am I story. Are you sure you want to know? <laughs> anyway, Ms. Ritter calls out Peter for being late. She sits down heart. right behind me, promises he'll never do it again. Uh, to which she replies, don't make promises you can't keep. And he whispers into Gwen's ears, yeah, but those are the best kind. To which Gwen, went, Gwen smiles a little bit. Hey, she knows Gwen smoochie, doesn't smoochie. smile. 
if she's a human being, Gwen doesn't smile because you fucked off for two weeks and left her alone at her dad's funeral. Yeah. 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 Hey, bud. Hey, bud. And then. Hey. We get one a- final shot of Peter swinging through the city, and it ends with a shot of him shooting his web right at the camera in slow motion. And it kind of feels like it's going to get in your hair. Twenty yeah. twelve, baby. Three D. Gotta love it. Is that what it's for? Because it's a fucking what weird a place. Shot. Oh yeah. I like that it shot. does though, Andy. Did you? I like that it does the thing that it, the Spider Man video game does, where it freezes on his lats yeah. for like a minute. Yeah. You know, where he jumps off and it freezes on his lats and his back while you jump into the air, and you're just like. Oh, I'm about to find some fucking pigeons and bring them back to that guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. hell God. yeah. <laughs> Wait, stop playing the game. I do love also that they have a, a, the use of that pose that he does where he shoots the web as his like legs are going out. Like, he's like, yeah. he's like doing they that. That was like every Todd McFarlane so comic. Yeah. Fucking rad. It's, it just looks cool. It's it just does. cool looking. I do, and I appreciate the swapping of the American flag for a full moon instead because the flag belongs to C. Thomas Howell, star of The Outsiders. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> But also, um, I do want to say we are then treated to a mid credit sequence, which is, I remember Baffling. seeing this, this mid, this med credit sequence and being like, oh no, oh no. Shit, I didn't catch that. I didn't know there was one. I'm sorry. There's a yeah, mid credit I- sequence of the lizard, uh, being admitted into what is probably like, uh, Ravencroft. El- yeah. Raven. Yeah. Like he sees Woody Harrelson as carnage. Yeah, and and basically he's put into this dark cell and uh, this Spider-Man character named The Gentleman who is like a mysterious benefactor of the Sinister Six comes in. And we're is like, like, we're talking F-level Spider-Man yeah. villain. Yeah, and he comes in and he's like with his fucking fedora and he's like, hey man, did you tell him what happened to Richard Parker? And he's like, no, of course, of course I didn't. Why would I do that? That'd be crazy. Uh, everything else I did is was made sense and so then he's like good yeah ah, ah. and literally just like he goes yeah ah, ah. and then lightning strikes and he disappears and i was like i remember thinking it's too quick you can't do the sinister six right now it's too quick yeah you, can. you haven't earned it don't try Sony to rush this that money so you needed that money before all their emails get hacked they felt real I, you could see in this movie the beginnings of them being like okay mark we want to let you do what you want to do but we let Sam do what he wanted to do for like a few movies and we just really feel like Marvel is doing like a lot right now and we want that so can we have that like immediately like maybe next summer yeah it's the DC story let's fast track this shit immediately yeah it's it's real bad in the context of knowing what happens with all this I will Mm -hmm. say watching it the first time it is not that bad because they are just setting something up it's what they do with that setup yeah. that is like okay then you rush it because just this it's like cool this is the beginning of what could have been something really cool i think him disappearing with the lightning strike was a little much and even mm-hmm. this like even who is this guy was a big question because the fact that me somebody that has literally read thousands of spider-man comics i didn't know who he was like this guy might as well and could have been norman osborne we didn't mm-hmm. really know at that point yeah, it's so shadowy see. and fucking weird so it's like i like the idea of watching post-credit scenes and not really knowing exactly what's going on but kind of having a hint i haven't had that for a long time like watching eternals was one of the first times i'm like and in the most recent the phase four movies like most of the post-credit scenes i'm like i don't really know exactly where this is going and that's kind of fun yeah. uh, and with this i think that that had that element but we now know where it goes and it's a bad place so well that is i also yeah i also just didn't like richard and mary are super spy scientists i felt I like, like i felt like that's something that you can bring into a comic book with 40 years of history but that's that's a that's an onion you gotta peel back it's you a, know it's a lot mean? and it weighs down this movie unfortunately entirely um, and, and and it's not because it's not that fun that's the other thing too is like spy espionage stuff is cool but you know who i want to see do that peter I want Spider Man to do that. Beta. I want him to unfold these mysteries and fight these the heroes. night monkey. I, the I I I I only I disagree with the whole parent arc only because it was so easy for me to ignore, <laughs> and I just like pretended it wasn't there yeah. and it didn't. It just yeah. It was. It felt like it was barely even there. Like they talked about it every now and then, but I'm just like that. We're never gonna get there, so just mm-hmm. pretend it isn't a, an issue, Andy. Pretend it's, it's not yeah. An issue. It's it's one of those things, and I can't wait until we get to it too. But it's one of those things where it's like. Man, you want to talk about good choices, make? How about we don't need to show Peter get bit by a spider anymore, and we don't need Uncle Ben to die anymore? I'll tell you what. How about we what? just dive into the franchise with knowing all that shit, right? Like, we don't need Peter. We don't need to see fucking Bruce Wayne's parents die anymore either. 
we get it. Let's just go into it. Let's go. Dude, I mean, and people can't resist, right? Like, like uh, Zachy, uh, Zachy S had to show, like, even in Batman v Superman, he was like, what if he just dreams about pearls falling? Because I yeah, just, what, I didn't get to do it. So can I do it? Yeah. What like, if I cast like, <laughs> two great actors and have them in one <laughs> little cameo scene here, never to be seen again? That was but, weird. I mean, I initially, when they introed Spider-Man in, in Civil War, I initially was like, well, I understand that we have like a little bit of fatigue. We've heard the story of how Spider-Man happens a lot. But I did sort of feel, I was very happy when last week on Disney Plus Day, they announced Spider-Man freshman year because I was just like, I do want to see how this MCU Spider-Man became Spider-Man. And I like that they made it that sort of like, I don't like, I don't like to call it B-tier content, but it's the optional content, right? Like you don't have to watch What If if you don't want to, but if you enjoy it, enjoy What If. Here's how Spider-Man in the MCU became Spider-Man. If you like it, enjoy it. If you don't, doesn't matter. You know? Yeah. I like that we no, get dude, that choice. I, I'm totally with you. And I, like I said earlier, I can't wait to rewatch Homecoming and Far From Home this close to these Spider-Man movies because I love those fucking movies. I think they're easily the best Spider-Man that we've had live action. But like, they do lack a lot of this Spider-Man moments. And even though us as an audience knows, yeah, Uncle Ben died and yeah, it caused all this stuff, like, not seeing it, not knowing exactly how, and not knowing how meaningful it was, makes the Peter we have in the MCU not necessarily mm. Spider-Man. Yeah, he doesn't of. even mention it. It's it's all about like I want to live up. I want to make well. I want to make my aunt proud, but I also want to live up to what Tony Stark thinks of me. Right. Yeah. Uh, which which is a motivator for for which MC, is great. for for the comic book Peter Parker for a little while, but it's not like the overarching thing that made him Spider-Man. So. Listen, it's we we, it's know weird. A whole story is just an excuse to get happy and Marissa Tomei in a room together, and you know what? I just I'm not mad at that. It. I just and I'm telling you right now. And I swear to off, God, if that Charlie Cox, if that Charlie Cox thing was is a Photoshop, I'm Charlie gonna cry. Cox. I'm get gonna cry so hard. Um, I just want you guys to know that the Martha joke was way better than you guys gave. No, 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 it wasn't Nick. It wasn't. No, I, I gave you credit <laughs> enough. Good enough. Joke. Uh, but Andy, please hit us with a little thing I like to call haiku and review. I didn't know we were doing that. Seven <laughs> syllables in the middle. You need five for the first and last line. We're going to eight o'clock. If you're not poetic, no need to fret. And haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your reviews in haiku form, just like Andrew Feisner did. Aunt May is a cat. All Homeward Bound fans see that. <laughs> the crane scene falls flat. Shout out. Great. Oof. Sally, dude. You got to love it. You got to love it. That was great. Uh, and Grant Burton writes in and says, Spider-Man again. Surprise. They killed Uncle Ben. I really like Gwen. Better yeah. than Toby. The lighting is so low-key. It's far too moody. Huh. Moody? <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to do rhyme-wise there, but they don't need a rhyme, so I guess it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I guess it's okay. And that's yeah, all we got there. Song. Yeah. So, everyone, thank you all for tuning into this, uh, I think, longest episode we've had so far yeah. of Spider-Man in Review, which Wild. is impressive. Very impressive. Uh, we'll be back next week with Amazing Spider-Man 2. But before we get there, later this week, we're ending it with Ghostbusters Afterlife in Review, the end of Ghostbusters in Review so far. Will there be another one after this? We'll have to wait and see. Maybe in a couple of years. Maybe if this one does really well. Who knows? But Afterlife will be there. Greg Miller will be joining us for that. Very exciting stuff. But if you're into Spider-Man, next week we got Amazing Spider-Man 2. Then, like I said, we got Spider-Man Homecoming. We got Spider-Man Far From Home. And it's all leading to this. Spider-Man Far, not far from home. What the fuck's it called? No way, no way home, home, which we will be reacting to the new trailer uh, whenever it comes out. As of the time of you recording this, just go to youtube.com slash kind of funny. It'll fucking be there. You know what's up. I love you all. Bye.